Did we have a question this week? Not a question. I just was surprised that you had never heard about the, the guy who was scamming KFC. No. So what happened? What did he do? <clears throat> Over the course of a year, mm-hmm. he was walking into various KFCs and saying <laughs> that uh, he worked for the company. So give him free food. <laughs> and quality control. Ah. And quality control. And he got free food for a year. That is hilarious. <laughs> so how did he get caught? I actually don't know. Did you actually read, read the story? I, I did not read it. I just, I don't know. How, how did it get caught? I want to know. What? Somebody had to be eventually like, you know what? Like quality control. You got like I'm an quality ID. control. <laughs> <laughs> Some bullshit like that. <laughs> the Spider-Man meme. Right. I don't get how you get away f- for doing that. For a whole year. For a year. Because they probably told somebody at the counter who's probably like 16, 17, 18, don't give a fuck. And just be like, all right, cool. You got a uniform on. I believe you. <laughs> but did he have it? What if he just walked in and just walked regular in? clothes? I mean, like, like, hey, I work for like, y'all. I work for give me, give me, I need a free I 10 a piece. piece. Right now, disc. ASAP. Fresh. <laughs> Fresh out the grease. Spicy. Wow. <laughs> that guy, like, it's genius, but that also has to be, like, the worst use of, like, con man skills ever. <laughs> like, <laughs> for free KFC? I mean, it ain't even Popeyes. For some free chicken. That's, that's, the, that's the question I'm asking you. If y'all what? could get free fast food oh, for shit. a year. Oh, God. Mm. Where would you get it from? Chick-fil-A. I thought about That's a strong one. They got some strong beliefs, but man, that chicken is blessed. Yeah, it really is. Mm. Like you know how I am. I'm, like, I'm surprised how conscious you I actually, am, but ch- you can... that chicken is undefeated. <laughs> is you undefeated. can taste the oppression, but goddamn, <laughs> <laughs> delicious. <laughs> I'm thinking Noodles and Company. <clears throat> it has a they have a noodles, nice variety. That's a, that's a... That kind that's of fast food. Yeah. Like I was thinking, like basically, oh. like a drive-through. Like, I count fast, fast food. I count fast food as has a drive-through, which is what yeah. I told oh. your wife when she was well, doing that. Like that's none of the companies not count as fast food. To yeah. Me. Okay. Yeah, don't have a drive-through. Like is not fast food. Uh, yeah, okay. It's not drive-through. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, I like you. Let me trick that off. Damn it. All right. So then I will say cousins. You know what? I'm not mad at it. I had free cousins for a year when I won that Bucks thing. Oh yeah, you did. One, didn't last a year. <laughs> Oh, Boy. they gave you a year's worth of coupons or tickets or something? Like what they thought would suffice <laughs> for a normal person for a year of cousins. You know I flew I, through that in like yeah. four months. I like it was that. gone. Mm. It was gone. Like you just get one free any sandwich you first, want? It's a gift card, so uh-huh. you can do whatever you want. But it was too many family. I'm like, um, could you uh, could you get me a, uh, a 15 inch? Uh, <laughs> they want hoes. <laughs> hoes, <laughs> not even the half. They want can the Can you whole. order the party platter? <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, having a few people over there. Can I get a cheesesteak? Like, damn, can I get an invite? Cheese? You want the cheesesteak? You don't want a ham and cheese? You want, no, the, no. You want the hot cheese? No grill. swine mm-hmm. for me. <laughs> Kobe beef. <laughs> a Top of the line. Of the day. I think I would actually go with Taco Bell. Mm, you had mud butt for a year. <laughs> <laughs> no. I eat, we eat Taco Bell regularly. That's, 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 that is the mayor's only Talking like, about food. running for the border, B. Jesus <laughs> that's Christ. his only... Uh, <laughs> That's the only yeah, fast food yeah. place that he Jesus. actually likes. So over the course of us being together, this uh-huh. what six six years or so. I can't tell you last time I had. Taco We've Bell. been eating Taco Bell. Cons- I'm sure if I stopped eating Taco Bell and tried uh-huh. to eat it again, it'd be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> oh, your, your stomach is trained. For I it am now. trained to eat Taco Bell. <laughs> I think I've had Taco Bell twice in like the last twelve years. Taco Bell trained. has been named like no, the number we, one Mexican <laughs> restaurant though, that's, that's, in the United that's States. Wild. Like, like how? That's thanks to like West Virginia and <laughs> Kansas and shit. Like, Taco, that's, that's the only Mexican. They got it right. Up there. Wyoming. This is authentic. <laughs> Damn, it's fucked up. <laughs> right. Let's give all the people in Wyoming and wherever you just said. What other state you said? Maine. So, you could probably think of like Virginia the Upper East Coast. Camps. No, Maine probably got some. some they got one. Lobster. No, they, they, they got, got They got seafood. They got fish tacos. Fish tacos. Oh, mm. mm. Well, <laughs> let, let's get into the show before we start going on a food tangent. <laughs> Episode 101 of Technical File, the sports podcast you never knew you needed. It's your boy, T I M K I N Z, the number three, aka Ask Ketchum, aka Mr. Give It To Me. No, What's popping? Like <laughs> what y'all doing this week? I am the Eric J. Only known as the Eric J. And I'm Camille, point guard of the crew, the real life <laughs> Tifa Lockhart, the girl next door. You know, holding it down for all the women who love sports. And it's your boy, K. Harris, the gentleman. The gentleman. Also known as, um, shit. 
<laughs> wow. wow. Um, hold on, give me a second. You've done this 101 times. I talk, bro. <laughs> and it's your boy K. Harris, the gentleman. The, the gentleman. gentleman. The everyday gentleman. 24 7. But also known as K. Diddy. Take that, take that. There we go. Jabroni. <laughs> Delete that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyways. You can find us on www.technicalfile.com. You can also find the links to our social media on the website. That is on Facebook. We are at Technical File Podcast. We also have a Technical File Pod Overtime group on the Facebook as well where you can interact with the other listeners and fam. Um, you can also catch us on Twitter and the Instagram at Technical File. Don't forget to put the K on that motherfucker. Indeed. I was going to say indubitably. I'm glad I did it. <laughs> <laughs> but like we say, like I say everywhere, every <laughs> time, like, I'm fine. I told, what I tell you at the beginning, I'm fumbling, God damn it. Uh, hold on, let me get one more. Hey, we trust you. We'll keep handing the ball thank to you, you bro. Thank you, thank you. I'm mellow. I'm going to get hot soon. Let me, let me just, okay. But like I say every week, man. Like Chris Middleton. Oh, hey, pull it from half. <laughs> but like I say every week, man, if you guys enjoy being a part of this amazing tech file fam share with a family member share with a co-worker a friend a random stranger at starbucks um or wherever you get your coffee or whatever you get your breakfast you know just share with anybody share it on facebook right now twitter everything shares all right become part of this amazing technical file fam fair enough he's still warming up he is let me get there you hit a couple you hit a couple in there huh yeah i know yeah but once you you know share with a friend or family member tell them to subscribe like rate review all that on their uh chosen pl- podcast platform whether that be uh apple podcast <laughs> google podcast stitcher <laughs> soundcloud <laughs> iHeartRadio. uh <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot guys sorry well, uh, the mayor gave us a card yeah, and I'm tripping and off. And it's of, a lobster with a top I want hat. It to, I want it to be my Post personal it. logo. Post it. Oh yeah, because it, it's a lobster with a top hat. It's a gentleman. <laughs> Good day, sir. A, a gentleman <laughs> lobster. <laughs> <laughs> he has a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can find that on our uh, technical file uh, social media platforms that Tim just ran read off. Uh, I was done with my spiel, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was just threw them all off. Yeah, Y'all yeah, my baby. Oops. Sorry. It was him pointing at the top. He said, it has a top hat. That's what made me laugh. I apologize, listeners. But that car was in here for like 10 minutes. You just not realized that? No, I, no. I, I just, it, it inspired it, it, it me. It tickled him. Yes, and it, it inspired me. In that moment. It tickled the gentleman. <laughs> a gentleman tickling pause? another gentleman. That's a pause, bro. That's a pause. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, son. There was none of this or that last week. I completely yeah, forgot. It was Thursday. Oh, like, shit. the Bucks playing, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't even realize we didn't have one. Either. I'm not going to lie to you. The Bucks playing have thrown me all off. I am not used to them playing basketball at this time of year. The Buckaroos. And it's throwing off my focus in life. I mean, shit, that's why we, you're getting this a day early. Oh, yeah. yeah. Welcome to the early drop. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> because the Bucks run three of the four uh, cast members' lives on this podcast. So, you know. Indeed. I've been watching every game, though, since the playoffs, so. I've been, you know, on supporting hard. You, you know. being caught up? Yeah. Well, how we play? That's why, that's why I ask questions to y'all. I'm like, well, I ain't been watching all year, so let me ask this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to I wanna be around here assuming. The funny thing about the playoffs is you were literally, like, watching the rest of the world catch up with how you play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. they were like, oh, well, he's finally doing this? Like, no, no. I think you said something earlier about Brooke uh, yeah. on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it's what he does. Yeah. <laughs> We've been doing this all year. But LA wanted to get rid of him after one year. We'll talk about that when we get to Magic. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're going to get into the show. So, mm-hmm. as you know, if you've been here before, holiday episodes go a little differently. This is a Memorial Day episode of Technical File. If you're new here, they're a little bit more laid back. We go around popcorn style, choosing topics. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> And we go from there. And the top five is not a traditional list. We draft on holidays. So buckle up because we don't know what we about to give y'all. It's about buckle up, buckaroos. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Damn, you were quicker than me. Uh-huh. We're going to go. <laughs> was, yeah. You took his joke placement. They did. I, was yeah. like, oh, I had it. I'm sorry. Right on the tip of my tongue. Oh, there we go. Well. That's what she said. Let's get, <laughs> let's get to the topic discussion then. And leading off. All righty then. Guess who's up first? Yeah. Lead off. Hey. Anyways, my finger is hovering over the bell as we speak. <laughs> so, uh, Saints wide receiver Ted Ginn <laughs> yeah, Jr., 34-year-old. Mm-hmm. 
Ted Ginn Jr. said that he will race anybody for 10K. At least 10K. At least 10K. That's the minimum the race was. <laughs> and he actually got a challenger. So, Matthew... Oh, shoot. I ain't tried... My wife quit texting me. Uh, <laughs> 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 I clicked on her text. I ain't uh, trying to do that. Uh, Matthew Balling, yeah. a.k.a. Yeah, White Lightning. Right. <laughs> I had never heard of White Lightning. He Like, the record, he just broke, like... That's like the high school kid, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so... He got question, 10K to put up? Well, Gin does. No, I'm talking about the... the well, don't. Uh, he, oh, okay. he might find a sponsor. I mean, he's a, people... he's a white high school track star, so like okay. he might have... So, family. Gin ran a 4.37 40-yard dash before the 2007 draft. Mm-hmm. Reminder, he's 34 years old. Right. That motherfucker still be moving. <laughs> Bowling is the viral Texas high school track star who recently set a national high school record with a 10.13 second 100 meter dash. So I'm not good at doing uh, metric conversion, so I don't know. Me what neither, but he fast as shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> I give him a shot. The, just sum it all up. He fast as shit. I give him a shot. How many 40 yards in uh, 100 meters? I'm gonna Google that while y'all just oh, talking. Question. Keep queuing it up. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. Anyways, do you think you would you take the race? No, I Hell know I no. can't win. Like shit, like if if it was like the freeze in Atlanta, like where you no, have to race I would the race, like where they give me a, a significant head start, <laughs> maybe I give it a shot. Like it got to be like three fourths of the way, like. <laughs> <laughs> But just a, that's like that episode of Atlanta where they was doing racing Mike Vick. That was funny. That was hilarious. He thought he was. He was like, man, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's Mike Vick, dog. Like he's known for speed. So it's that again. One so, meter is one point zero nine four yards. One point zero nine four for one meter. So, so yeah, he was just moving. Under, <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. moving. Yeah. Woof. Okay. That should be fun. No, I would if they actually do it. I w- they're not. He's in high school. Like I feel like that would be against some kind of yeah, rule. Say, like, <laughs> some like, amateur rule. Yeah, uh, like something. Am- eligibility and shit. Oh, that's so fucking stupid, bro. Like let the ma- damn forty Anyways. and forty. But like they can do it for is, cash, but they could probably do it just to do just it. Just to race. Forty yards is thirty six point five seven six meters. Jesus so Christ. that boy was moving. If he ran a hundred, how meters, many meters? I said uh, 36.576 meters is a 40-yard dash. So basically three times. Yeah. yeah, Three times 40. Okay. Damn. So there you go. And, uh... Damn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker was moving. moving. Like I just, I just d- divided 10.13 by three. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Damn near a three, three. Close to it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he fast for shit. He's fast. He's fast. He's fast. Uh, I don't have any natural segue, so I'm just going to say uh, playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we are, as we record, we are three games into both the Eastern and Western Conference Finals. Mm-hmm. Um, Golden State is up 3-0 with a chance to sweep tonight. 3-0. So as you listen to this, you'll already know the outcome, but we don't, so we will pontificate. Oh, no, no. That's, <laughs> yeah, poor word choice, but yeah, um, it did not apply at all. Yeah, but, so I was um, like big word. <laughs> Ti, oh, no, he that is how Ti. Exactly, he's one of my favorite he, words. He's so. Ti out here right now. Fuck <laughs> with it. But uh, we will t- we'll talk about how what we think will happen, what? and then uh, the Bucks are leading two games to one with Game Four tomorrow night in Toronto. Toronto. So, what do you think about these series so far? We'll start with the West. I thought that Portland would exercise a couple demons at least and at least <laughs> win a game before we got here. They were close. They were leaving at I halftime to the game. Twice. If, if Kevon Looney didn't fall on Dame, maybe we would. Maybe they would have. Uh-huh. Yeah, Dame yeah. is talking about the sprained ribs. He said it's not affecting his play. She, yeah. yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> that saying. sounds she. good. But. It's not an excuse. We said that last week for Russ, right? Russ yeah. and Paul George. No, yeah. You out there, it ain't you no excuse. There, yeah, ain't no excuse. But... I, I, that series has been kind of like actually the games have been exciting now mm-hmm. that I think about it it's except just that game one. except for game one game two was real fun I love seeing uh, Seth Curry get off although Steph still had like 30 some points and made Seth look yeah like 17 right <laughs> like Seth had like 20 or something yeah. I was like man what a good game good game Seth <laughs> exactly. but it's Did like Steph that? just dropped His like brother, 36 like, oh, and you're like oh okay. <laughs> shoot from half court somebody <laughs> said Dale Curry is living LeVar Ball's dream he is yeah, <laughs> yeah. for real for yeah. real he is Oh boy! For a ball like yeah. that, Ramona, yeah. Ramona, Ramona that, that's what I was looking at. Something. I'm like, it's, it's towards magic, so we got to hold on to it. But it's about magic. Oh, see, I ain't get it. Yeah. Ooh, Lord. Yeah, yeah, man. 
We he, gonna... he went on first tank and showed his ass. Magic <laughs> show got oh. away to... His whole ass. His Tear it ass. up. Uh, Burn it pause. down. But um, it up. <laughs> I don't have any other thoughts besides that. I hope that Golden State finishes the job tonight. Why? <sighs> because you know how I feel about 3-0... Like if you're up three oh, just win it. Like but I don't I don't have For I the Bucks' sake, don't you want them to play, play more, more games? Sure. Go ahead. But no. it's I still, mean it's you don't still, have to watch more. Like it's still the war like I know. I don't really subscribe. Like they'll be they'll still <clears throat> I don't really care. Well I just want to know what type because of games they're using tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to know. The finals like, are gonna right. start when the finals are gonna start. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like it's gonna move up or be delayed. But I don't have any other thoughts besides that. Like Portland yeah. they mm. Yeah, like I said, I'm trying to see what type of Bruins they're using. <laughs> I, I really wanted Portland to put, like she said, put up a fight. Uh, these big ass halftime leads that they're going into. I think I seen a meme when it was like Portland was up like 45 and Golden State was just sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it was just different pictures of all of them on the bus, like just sleep. out yeah. cold, bro. Like that's wild. like you can tell that Golden State isn't worried about this series because they're playing oh, like their entire bench, like. The whole if you look bitch. at like that Houston series, like they went down to like a six man rotation by like, game seven, by game six. Yeah, mm-hmm. like they they're not worried about Toronto. Jesus Christ, they're not worried about <laughs> Portland in the slightest. No, nope. mm. and it works out for them because yeah. they need those extra bodies playing those minutes so yep. their guys can stay fresh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially with well, and it's injuries. a bonus that the <clears throat> bench guys are kind of getting off too. Yeah, yeah. because they said Katie's out the rest of the series, right? Yeah. At least, mm-hmm. and then Iggy's not playing tonight. Mm-hmm. Another calf. That's problem. a big blow for them. Yeah, but, but Draymond's out here playing like balling. And, but that's kind of like what I was going back to last week about KD's injury is that these guys have this is their fifth straight finals, mm-hmm. especially guys still playing now like KD and mm-hmm. uh, what's his name Boogie Cousins was like those are more recent. But they've played the equivalent of an extra season in these last five seasons, basically on, mm-hmm. just off of playoff games. Like that's playing from late October to early June for f- five straight years. Like, that's, that's going crazy. to take a toll on the body. Like, and the injuries that they're getting are all, like, muscular injuries. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, it's like, yeah. from overuse and yeah. fatigue and stuff yeah. like that. So, the fact that they are getting to rest a little bit more this series is beneficial for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, moving over to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, Bucks. Almost did it. They almost did it. But they uh, no, they I went up. Oh, yeah, I know. You. <laughs> <laughs> they went up two games to none. They went up two games to none. Um, they went to Toronto last night, Sunday, um, and lost in double overtime. Mm-hmm. Giannis fouled out. Uh, Kyle, Kyle Lowry, Lowry and Kyle. Norm Kyle. Norm Powell Kyle. fouled out. Um, it was not. A, it was a good game, but it wasn't a very well played game no. offensively. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. It was a lot of bricks. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of really bad shots. <laughs> but I mean, like these are two of the best defensive Defense, teams yeah. in the pl- in the league period. So I mean, it's not surprising. But there were a lot of like wide open shots that were missed or mm-hmm. just dumb decisions that were made. So I don't know. what do you guys I, think so far? I still feel good about the Bucks. What I realized that loss last night made me realize that I have had in my head for so long that the Bucks are going to the finals mm-hmm. that I'm not worried watching the games. Like I'm watching them like. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. And even this one where we lost, and I, I was on the couch like, mm, we didn't play well, but and we'll, is, we'll be back. The Bucks only lost two periods, which were the first quarter and the second overtime. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, they outscored Toronto the rest of the game. Yeah. I feel like the Bucks don't have like anything to worry about. they won each period. And they tied in the first overtime. Yeah. yeah, obviously. Yeah. So Just they don't have anything to worry about. Yeah. They don't. And, I, I mean, Toronto's good. Like, I thought it was going to be Bucks and five, and I will say very selfishly, that what I need the Bucks to do, mm-hmm. I need them to win on Tuesday. So okay, they can close out on your birthday. So they can close it out on my birthday, so right. I can be in a bar somewhere crying about my Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> we I'm, did it. I'm assuming that oh, you're taking off work on Friday. We finally I am, did it. I am off. I am off. And um, yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna look forward to being able to watch the Bucks on my birthday. That's been one of my like life goals for years. Like I've been mm-hmm. saying, like mm-hmm. every time I go to a game, they have like a little birthday shout. Mm-hmm. I'm like. I wish they'd be playing on my birthday. <laughs> yeah. At least, it, at least it's an option for you. My birthday in the middle of summer. Yeah, but mm. that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I want it. Like, I want the Bucks on my birthday, and I got it. So I need them to win four and five. Let's, please don't, don't, don't lose on my birthday. <laughs> I'll be crying in the bar for we a different it, reason. Yeah, like, we doing this for Camille. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I feel like, and I said this before, that they wanted to close it out here anyways. Yeah, but you have a conspiracy that My they conspiracy threw the theory is they they was they tried <laughs> their best and Toronto just they the motherfuckers just would not let us throw it for them. 
<laughs> as bad as we shot last night, we shot like complete and utter ass. They didn't try Who to throw that game. <laughs> well, you are crazy. I'm just saying, we shot like shit, and Toronto <laughs> just would not go we. away. We like, bro, here's the game. They shot. We trying to go home for game five. <laughs> this, this inspires like a mini rant for me, but like I'm tired of like oh, I'm tired of people that don't understand basketball, like commenting on shit. Man. Gotcha. Like. One stupid thing that I saw was like somebody was like, "Oh yeah, man, I knew the I knew the Bucks was gonna lose that game because it's way too much money to be made if they get a, another home game during the Eastern Conference Finals." Like, and they broke down the math like this many people <laughs> in Pfizer form sells this many. <laughs> like, bro, tickets. Like, like, like they already did all that, bro. Like, bro, I don't I don't got shit to do with. <laughs> <laughs> with nothing, and you think the players on this like as close as they are right now, right? Like they just going trick it. They care about that. They throwing. Something. So then, what but happened then to the first it. sweeps? The sweeps then? What like why don't te- why do teams sweep all the time then? Like because not they're all better. The time. I'm just saying, like you have to ask him that. Like okay, so what's up with sweeps? If if they want to keep oh, these games going, I got going. you. I got you. I got you. So like, you can uh, just keep dead that there. All they gonna do is oh oh oh. Well, some teams you know you just you can't even count them out, bro. You don't. They weren't even supposed to be there. <laughs> I mean, like people, like people would say, like the teams are like no, like first of all, even in tanking, like team, the players on the team aren't throwing those games, right? right. Like they're just putting a position to lose, but they still trying to win. Like right. maybe, may, if you want to have a conspiracy, like it's that the league is trying to generate more revenue by stretching these out because, like, going into game four against Boston, going into the game last night, I'm like Bucks aren't going to get a fav- favorable whistle, and I mean, like part of that is the natural home court advantage, but right. also it's like. In the NBA's best interest to kind of mm-hmm. tease these out a little bit. So, like, if they can tweak stuff on the margins, like, yeah, maybe. Like, that's that's all I'm willing to give credence to. But beyond mm-hmm. that, like, the players aren't on the court. Like, they're not going to play Intentionally 52 just... minutes in the game, like, because, like, just to throw it at the end. Right. Like, that doesn't make any sense. It does not. But they did it. Anyway. But, but anyway. they did it! <laughs> <laughs> but they did it. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I said Bucks and Six. So, to, <laughs> to win in Six, you got to lose two. Um, and I feel like game one again, like game one and game three were uh, Toronto's two. They just tricked off the first one. So, hmm. Bucks and five. Please, guys. <laughs> Please, Bucks and five. But I do know, like, Drake talking shit from the sideline to Giannis is a bad idea. No. I feel I have a feeling Giannis <laughs> is going to have a signature game soon. Like, mm-hmm. we haven't really, like, he had, what, 46 in the playoffs against Pistons or something like that? I don't remember. He had a 40 ball somewhere along the way. <laughs> hmm. I'm waiting for a 50 ball. I feel like it's coming, but then he probably ain't gonna play. The, he probably won't get enough minutes to play to get a 50 ball. Maybe. All I know is I want a I want a Giannis game. I need a Giannis game. And also, like my last little Bucks related tangent, like I feel like we're getting spoiled. At least me personally, I feel like I'm getting spoiled on Giannis. Like he had like 30 and 17 with five assists, two blocks, mm-hmm. and the steal. Mm-hmm. I was just like, like as I'm watching the game, it's just like, oh, it's just you know. <laughs> ho hum for ho hum for Giannis and I see his line at the end. I'm like, no, that was an amazing game. Right. And like even last night's game where he had 12 points with like 20 some rebounds. Yeah, he had 20. Yeah. I think 23 last night. 23 rebounds. Like he, had a, like he was a destroyer on defense. Like mm-hmm. it was just like, oh, that was a bad game because he didn't score like right. as he usually does. And he but turned the just, ball over like eight times. Yeah, yeah. he yeah, yeah, turned over. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I, I just feel like I'm. I want to take a, an appreciation for Giannis because mm-hmm. like what he's doing is amazing. Yeah, you're beast. That's yeah. probably how LeBron fans feel. Yeah. <clears throat> also, too, like, there's some podcasts I listen to, and it's like, stop taking LeBron for, for granted. Like, we're watching one of, if not the greatest, one of the two greatest mm-hmm. basketball players here. of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. even if you don't root for him, like, you should still yeah. appreciate the fact that you are able to be an NBA fan right. during the time that he's, he's playing. playing. Indeed. For sure, because I feel like I missed the boat on Kobe Bryant. I did not. I hated Kobe, and it was partly because of Ken. <laughs> hey, man. I've been diehard. We've been friends for so long, and his Indeed. love of Kobe made me hate them. Hey. And it wasn't until, like, 2010 where I was like, man, like, Kobe, that, man, he just be balling. Exactly. And I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't deny it no more. And I was like, I respect Kobe. And I was watching him play, and then he got hurt, like, shortly thereafter. So I learned Damn my lesson. Yeah. I, I'm going to appreciate people when I get the chance to. Let's talk about this Wilder fight. <laughs> um, what fight? That <laughs> knockout <laughs> was crazy. Done. It was uh, Deontay Wilder against Dominic Brazil. It's not spelled like the country, but it's pronounced the same. Yes. Which led to some very it's corny. It's actually spelled uh, kind of like Breeze. 
<laughs> they just put an E. <laughs> what L at the <laughs> Wait, whose drop was that? Like back in Gangsta Brazil. Brazil. Oh, oh, Gangsta Grizz. Gang- that's Gangsta, Gangsta Grizz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. That's the yeah. Hey, I heard that shit. Yeah, but the best like, oh, we got to take too. that, B. That's how he come out, Dominic <laughs> Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Get knocked the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Wilder knocked him out in the first round. How many minutes and seconds? I think it was like. 37. A- it was like the total time they were fighting was like a hundred and seven <laughs> seconds. It That's was, how you know it was short when they when they had it. Like, <laughs> like it was wild. Like the actual sound of him getting hit. Dog, Dog. that the motherfucker slow sounded motion, like a though. gunshot. It I was sounded, in the house like holy shit. Yes, that's exactly how like the art. Me and Norman like, was like, oh my god. Like, oh, wait, did hit. y'all pay for the fight? It was on Showtime. Showtime. Oh okay, mm-hmm. so it was, was on Showtime. I would be mad. In case y'all didn't hear, I just want to. I want the sound. Jesus. That I want them to hear what Jesus it sounded like Christ. when he knocked. Like, I thought the cuss when he knocked him out. I was like, uh, he Whoa. killed. He he tried. He almost did. He told Jesus. He, he said he would. Matter of fact, <laughs> matter of fact, let me play his clip of his scary clip. So before they even got into the ring, there's some personal beef between uh, Wilder and Brazil. They got into a fight in a hotel lobby apparently back in the day, and they've <laughs> had beef ever since. Can't then. forget that shit. So Wilder was, you know, talking about the fight and getting ready for it. And he had some things that he had to say. The WBC actually reprimanded him thereafter. Like, this is not acceptable. Right. You can't say right. things You can't like be this. doing shit like that, bro. But this was Wilder. Hey, Dominique Brazil asked for this. I didn't go seek him. He seeked me. So if it comes, it comes. This is a brutal sport. This is not a gentleman's sport. I keep saying this is not a gentleman's sport. We don't ask to hit each other in the face. But we does in a way. And you can ask any doctor around the world, he'll tell you the head is not meant to be hit. Anybody can go. And on this particular time, we have bad blood against each other. This is the only sport where you can kill a man and get paid for it at the same time. It's legal. So why not use my right to do so? And then he smiled after he said it. They're like, yo, 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 my man, you, you bugging. So that's how he went into the fight, and then he actually. They said he was bring, they was bringing wives and kids into the shit. Like oh, he, was, he right. was like, "You ain't for the disrespect me." Da, 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 da. I'm like, "Y'all yeah, bringing wives and kids, and y'all both boxes." <laughs> so this is the punch. I just want y'all to hear it in case you haven't seen it yet. In which case, you need to find the clip. Like Man. it's just crazy. To Brazil for, for having the character to throw with him. And- oh, Jesus, God. damn! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Dog. Jesus just Christ. Just Dog. out. Just when I was like, that my man. God. Out. Dog. The slow motion. And then though. people were like, the count started too early. And I think no, Serial no. Sensei wrote in our overtime group, like, when your soul leaves your body, there's man. no count. Like, <laughs> Even like when he stood gone. up, he still couldn't stay up. He was bro. like this. Like, the ref was holding him up. That man was not going to win that fight. Although Brazil said he felt like they stopped the fight prematurely because he could hear when he got to the seven in the count. And I was like, wait a minute. He was like, oh, wait, hear. I went seven already? <laughs> I could hear him. I couldn't see him yet. <laughs> but I can <laughs> hear I just, I just don't have to get up. But yeah, that was, that was crazy. So. That shit was wild. That man. Yeah, that was wild. I want to be a buzzkill, but it's kind of crazy like how we look at NFL concussions but like we still condone boxing which is like just concussions period because like that's natural for it's like Wilder said it's the only sport where it's like that so you know yeah I I feel you alright so um, after the NBA lottery um, at NFL draft tweeted hey NFL we want a lottery too we want a draft lottery too Um, do you guys think that the NFL should consider doing a um, a draft lottery, even if it's only for the first round. I don't know about the NFL doing a draft round. Like, like I can get them saying they want it, but I feel like the NFL is different as far as like I don't think organizations in the NFL can truly tank. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's harder. Like the the reason why they changed it for the NBA is to prevent tanking mm-hmm. and shit. Like this season happened, which will deter a lot of teams. I'm sure next season from trying to tank. Mm. The NFL system is more so like it's just it, typically it's the front office that's really bad. It's uh, similar in these damn teams, but the players, I mean, it's still like they're not like out of it, out of it. You have those couple seasons where you might get a two ten, a two win team, three ten win, ah, three ten, win. three win, he said, three win team, yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, for the most part, it's, it's more parody. <laughs> right. <laughs> Green yeah. and the hungry. yam on the side of shit. <laughs> and I think that, that that point that you hit on last, like it being a parody league, like basically any team is in the running for a number one pick every year anyway just from, mm-hmm. like, injuries, the condensed schedule. Like, 
it's a small sample size anyway. So I think that there's already like enough variation between the teams anyway. So like you can have a down year and then get a top ten pick and then bump right back up. So um, with the NBA, like it's such a heavily star driven league that one player can change your franchise mm-hmm. so dramatically. Like Crazy. Zion this year, that teams one are willing to tank and then also like the the reward is so high that you actually want the number one pick like at the at the detriment of making the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad the, N- the NBA changed it, but I don't think the NFL should adopt it. I mean, it would make it more exciting, but I don't think that they need it Especially for... Especially not in the first anything. round. Like, that, I don't think that would make sense. Like, if NFL was going to try to test it, I would say mm-hmm. they do it in the seventh round where nobody cares anyways, but now you're adding mm-hmm. some kind of aspect of, like... To make people want to like watch seven, it. Yeah. Like, seven makes it too low, so I feel like maybe... Fourth or fifth? Somewhere third in the middle? Third. Somewhere in there. Yeah, third, second, third round. But put it... Not the first round, but put it... If you want to... I could see people getting really upset about that, though. Like, <laughs> why are y'all changing? Mm-hmm. This and this? I mean, mm-hmm. like, they already get compensatory picks. I probably said that right. Compens- compensatory. There you go. That's the word. They get those. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's, it's just a little bit different. More team, or not more teams, but more rounds. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. I don't know if I would be there for it. I do want to shout out Pratik Patel from ESPN Milwaukee. He had an excellent idea for the NBA draft lottery. They need to make it either the day of or the day before the actual NBA draft. Like that just would for just, chaos? Just for chaos sake. Oh, mm. That would be dope. I would, I would be there for a day of. Yeah. Like, I think he said maybe an hour before the draft. Like, complete, that would just like, be complete, complete chaos. That's chaos, for real. That's, com- that's bullshit. <laughs> that's <laughs> complete <laughs> chaos. That's com- like, you would have I mean, no- like, you got to have contingency. So, it's like, yeah. if we pick here, we're going with it. Like, first of all, your board got to be set. You got to have trades already lined up. Like, if mm. this happens. I mean, like, these are you multi- put- multi-billion dollar organizations like yeah. they have the resources to i feel a day that's too that's too short well, i mean man. to his point if your front office is set up the way it's supposed to mm-hmm. you shouldn't have an issue with it mm-hmm. because you'll have a plan in place no matter what if i'm fall here if we fall here we looking for this guy we're looking for this need we have this to fill when is the draft again the 20 something of, of june, june. Yeah. okay so in between, like, you still I, have the first of all, I don't stuff. understand like why there's such a lag between the draft lottery and the end of the season anyway. So if you're gonna have it in the middle of the playoffs when they've been done for a month and a half, like you might as well just wait until Well, it used to be a thing where I felt like they started announcing it when they announced it to try to make the NBA season feel longer. Like mm-hmm. we're just throwing more things at you to think about mm-hmm. now as we continue going on. So I always felt like the draft lottery was strategically placed in the middle of the playoffs. So Play that off. non-playoff teams had something to look, to look forward, forward to. to. Like mm-hmm. so, now they're also invested. Yeah. They're looking at things, and then free agent speculation the continues to grow because mm-hmm. then you're thinking about, well, this pick could do this and this could do that. Yeah. So like, I get it, but for chaos sake, sure. For entertainment. For like, entertainment, yeah, but practically, like I wouldn't, I would like as meant, a fan. Like, as a fan, like I don't want it that close. Like mm-hmm. if you want to move it up a little bit closer, sure. But the day before seems a little like. That's like giving somebody a whole exam and like here's your here's your exam and it's like pop quiz. Yeah, like I don't, <laughs> I don't want a pop quiz when I'm thinking about the future of my franchise. I'm mulling all of this That's over fair. for so long. How That's much true. do I get just for my name to be correct? <laughs> 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 That's the only thing I know on this test. That'll be some franchises for sure, for sure. Exactly. Jim Dolan. <laughs> he say the New York Nets and shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So speaking of off season. Uh, the finalists of the NBA honors have been announced. So they, they need to change that. Talking <laughs> about timing. <laughs> so um, has playoff performance changed? Who you think should win any of the following awards? Okay. For MVP, it's Giannis. No. Nope. Or you want to <laughs> take that? In? Oh, okay. The Giannis finals. and James Harden. And Paul George. And Paul George. And Paul He's George. The but no, it's, I think it's still Giannis. No, it's still Giannis to me too. Giannis. All right, I'm going with Giannis too. Um, defensive Player of the Year. We have Giannis. Paul George and Rudy Gobert. I had Giannis before, and it's only been solidified. I feel like I had somebody different before. I didn't have Giannis. Or did I have Giannis for Defensive Player of the Year? I don't remember. I'm rolling with Giannis. I'm rolling with Giannis too. Honestly, it should be Giannis. Like yeah. I can see Paul George, but Paul George is he? No, if Paul George didn't get hurt, he would have been the answer. Yeah, if he but didn't get hurt, him being hurt, he yeah. shouldn't. Like, I mean, I get why he's there, but mm-hmm. like, no, it's not him. And if I like. Giannis can't be played off the court defensively. Oh, I went. I went. We all went with Giannis. Right, right, right. I mean, I'm just saying. Like, no, I, I feel looking, like Go- Gobert might be. Okay, I was checking what we said. Gotcha. We all went Giannis. 
But so I feel like yeah. Gobert is probably going to win. Just he probably based is. on like the Pass. reporting after. No, like people come out with, oh, here's who I picked. So like I feel like he was so far ahead, like he'll win. But Gobert is definitely dominant defensively, but mm-hmm. he's not versatile enough to be like like a Draymond or a Kawhi or Giannis. Like they mm-hmm. are like they can just destroy Everywhere. you defensively <laughs> and you can't play them off the court. Like there's no, no offense that you can run that's like, oh, we can just exploit but you this can exploit player. Yeah. Rudy Gobert. Mm-hmm. Which Houston has done two straight years in the Rudy. Play. Yeah. Rudy Pooh. Um next one <laughs> against Houston. Rookie of the year. <laughs> so finalist is Aiton. From the Suns, Luka Doncic from Mavs, and Trey Young from the Hawks. Well, none of them made the playoffs, so I right. think it's the same. So, yeah, but if people were wondering, um, we were split. It was half and half. Me and Tim went with Luka and Eric and came up with Trey. I still feel the same way. Because yeah. they, they weren't in the playoffs, so. Full yeah. disclosure, mine was a protest vote, but yeah. <laughs> uh, six so, man. You, so you know who should, you know who should oh, win. Yeah. I mean, I know who's going to win. But yeah, it's Luka. Yeah. Like they they had that etched in stone since late yeah. November. They yeah. crowned him before. All-Star. But still, the stats show like his quote unquote downplay. Mm-hmm. Like it was still very yeah, good. Exactly. Like, yeah. Then he's he not saying like, it's not deserving. What was, was it? Twenty? Well. Then he ended with twenty-seven and seven or something like that. I don't remember his final stats, five. but I do know that uh, post All Star break when he was in the shooting slump. He still ended the season with better stats than Young in the following points per game, rebounds per game, blocks per game, field goal percentage, true shooting percentage, net rating, and defensive rating. There you have it. Hmm. Like, both are really good, but mm-hmm. Luka, like, his slump wasn't, like... His slump didn't affect him. him. It didn't take him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, six man. We got Montrez Harrell. 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 Montrez be balling, though. Yeah, he do. Lou Williams. We know who getting it. And Demonte Sabonis. From the Pacers. I don't know who I picked, but I know Lou Will. If we all said Lou, yeah, Will. Yeah, Lou Will. I do want to say Sabonis had a really good year. And mm-hmm. if Lou Will wasn't Lou Will, he would have had a real yeah, shot. Lou Will is. Yeah. <laughs> Coach of the year. Coach Bud, Mike Malone for the Nuggets, or Doc Rivers for the Clippers? Nope. Hadn't uh, changed me a bit. I'm going with the best team record. Bud. All three of you had Bud. I had Doc. Doc. I I wouldn't be, I don't care who really wins because all of the people who are nominated are phenomenal coaches. Yeah, they're all great. So I can mm-hmm. see the argument for all of them. Like Bud makes sense. I mean, all of the ones that are nominated plus like three or four are extra. Exactly. Ones. Like, yeah. So. And lastly, most improved player: uh, De'Aaron Fox, D'Angelo Russell, or Pascal Siakam. We were split. Tim and Ken went with D'Angelo Russell, mm-hmm. and me and Eric went with Pascal. I, I think I think the playoffs hurt Russell. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to base most it off definitely. of that, huh? I said most definitely. But mm-hmm. Pascal, he is shown like dude is nice. He's also <laughs> playing the bus right now, so fuck him. But <laughs> right. but he's good. Yeah, he's good. All right, so that's the end of uh, NBA honors. Is that even what it's called? That's exactly what mm-hmm. that show is called. Yeah. So they just ate the entire NFL. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I, I would like for them to go back to the old way where the awards <laughs> yeah. were announced NBA one by honors. one mm. throughout the playoffs. Yeah, can you imagine like game two of the Eastern Conference semifinals and LeBron? I mean, Jesus Christ, I call him LeBron. I mean, I can see why you would. <laughs> Same difference. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Giannis, you know, comes out to the center court, five yeah, side get form. The, like, let us yeah. have it now. Like, we don't... The, the, yeah. the, Give it to me. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> right, Stephen A. He <laughs> <laughs> was in the club in Milwaukee. He yeah, sure he was. was in the club with Shaq. With Shaq. Kicking it. Real life d rock. Looking creepy. Um, <laughs> he was looking way too old to be what in the club. Though? Like he was, just, he was somebody like sugar Shaq daddy still fit there. for some reason, but... Yeah, he was in there looking like a sugar daddy. <laughs> he probably he was. Probably he probably was. was. He was yeah, looking, girl, I see if, you over there. If Stephen A. was shooting this shot at you, please contact us. Definitely. Let us know. You can DM us. We'll keep you anonymous, but just oh, let us know. Let us know. If he was, if he was, uh, if he was at you in cl- and lucid. Yeah. Of yeah. all here being, being loose. <laughs> <laughs> loose and lucid. Loose it's and always lucid. spots like that, ain't it? Lucid, 720. Uh, uh, here you go. Kiss. Here you go. Places you get loose at. No. <laughs> no, no, I get what Places that don't let you in. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> let us in. You know what I mean? There you go. <laughs> I want to be there too. Looking at it, <laughs> standing outside and shit. You got a plus one. You need a plus Your one again. Your skin too dark Sorry. for this one, bro. <laughs> Seven twenty. Oh my bad. Terrible. So much you, bullshit. You, you, so you, much don't, bullshit. you don't need the, sh- the shade mark, bro. You can get too dark. <laughs> like a paper bag when you right. walk mm-hmm. up, like too dark. Right, and my name on the list. Your name ain't on here, bro. <laughs> you, you like it's right there. It's right there. They no, did bro. that. 
<laughs> Looking dead at it. No, bro, no. right past your name ain't there, bro. It's right there, last page, second name from the top. <laughs> it's a mirage. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you on here? You can get in, but you guys can't. It's a plus one, bro. <laughs> hey, they got to stand. In, uh, we we was trying to get through VIP. They was like, they got to go through general admission. I Nobody will, in front of us. I will say though, one of my funnest nights out clubbing was at seven twenty, which I hate to say, but wait, wait, wait. seven twenty is where you were at. Yeah. Okay, let's blast them. Like I want to say their name as much as possible. 720 is racist. And oh, yeah. don't let people in there <laughs> they they, don't. That's what I was getting at. Because they wouldn't they let don't. me in. And then they was like, we got to go through general admission. Nobody in line in front of us. Mm-hmm. So we was like, fuck it. We walked across the little aisle, turned around. We was like, all right, what's good? Oh, yeah, you know, we got to let VIP in first. So once they come in, then, you know, you guys can get in. 20 minutes in line. 20 minutes later. It was probably nobody cold, there, wasn't bro? it? It was in the middle of winter, too. Y'all waited, too? We waited. <laughs> we was at the front of the fucking line. We was like, hey, you know what? Fine, fuck it. I had a ball in 721 time. One time. The only time. They was some bullshit. I'll tell y'all that story on the air, though. Oh. Why it was so fun. <laughs> Lit. Again, the mayor's ears perking up. <laughs> perking. <Excuse me. laughs> hey, that's where I got that saying from. If I don't know you, I don't know you. <laughs> that's what he told us. After we waited that time, we tried to get in. We was like, so we getting in? He was like, listen, bro. I don't know you. I don't know you. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Well, we, had, we had to get out of line, bro. Right. <laughs> okay. Why Moving on. Uh, the NCAA is considering a rule change that would allow college athletes to be compensated for their name, likeness, and images. Um, they have not discussed um, paying the players directly from the schools, um, but it's at least a start. So what do you guys think? So will they be getting paid through the NCAA? <laughs> no. So like right now, you know how you can't – basically you can't capitalize at all off of being a college mm-hmm. athlete. Mm-hmm. Like that. Like if you do an endorsement, if you Video take games. like this – Video games. If you take a job like that, you got because of your status as an athlete, mm-hmm. like none of that. You can't be compensated at all if they trace it back to you're getting this job strictly because you're an athlete for the school. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So now they're allowing them to kind yeah. of dabble into it, but not necessarily so like full on signing autographs for money. Like you would be able to do that. Oh, finally. So like basically, like just capitalizing on the fact that you're a person that exists, doing the shit that people, they do, and people. <laughs> Are interested in compensating you for being you, right? Mm-hmm. It's a start. Yeah, that's definitely a start. I mean, it's, it was dumb to me that it wasn't allowed in the first place. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Um, yeah, and I do think that they need to pay them anyway, but they should. They do. That should be able to bring the NCAA games back, though. Yeah, and that's what a lot of people are. The video games. Mm-hmm. People love them games. Dude, them games are so cool. Yeah. It was cool. I just like the fact that you could transfer your player yeah. from the college into yeah, the mm-hmm. top pros, Like yeah. that was tight. Mm, should I talk about magic now? It's the magic hour. Or should we talk about AEW? You know what? I'm going to save AEW for when you talk about money in the bank. We're just going to knock wrestling out in one fell swoop. For sure. now, we're going to talk about magic. I'm going to need the Hog score back because this man was on first take for an hour. An hour? <laughs> an hour. Holding court. Five seconds in. Hey, first off, I want to fire Luke Walton. What the fuck? <laughs> and I was by, like, oh, and, oh and by betrayal, I mean Rob Palenka. I was like, oh, <laughs> like five thirty seconds into the conversation, bro. That's why I said they went on break. They came back. They was like, listen, he telling it all. Ask everything, <laughs> everything. You probably was still saying shit too. He was, bro. Well, he was would awful, not bro. stop talking. So it was great for and, us. And the pe- <laughs> the pettiest part is today is the day that they introduced Frank Bogle as their head coach. Exactly. Exactly. He's just shooting on the hook, though. Does. Magic know what he's doing. Magic, yeah. So Showing he was on first takes. Magic gives zeros. And he explained exactly why he stepped down as president of the Lakers. What I want to do, because I think this is the funnest way to do it, because I know, Ken, you haven't heard the interview yet. No, I have not. I'm going to play it, and I want y'all to say stop. When something is said that you either disagree with, have more questions about, oh, want to make a comment on, we ain't gonna never get so that we're not <laughs> going to talk over Magic while he talks in case okay. someone else is listening so for the say, first time. Pause it. pause it, and we'll discuss it. If you have conspiracies, let them out. Okay? okay? For sure. Say less. This is a four-minute and 34-second clip. As I said, he was on there for a whole hour. So I would we're recommend. only doing four minutes. <laughs> we're only doing four minutes of it. It was I'll, a good interview, though. It was. It was interesting. What the hell happened? Why <laughs> did you resign from the Los Angeles Lakers? Well, it was a couple couple reasons. You know, um, first of all, uh, let me thank Jeannie Buss for the opportunity first. Uh, when we sat down and negotiated, I told her, I said, listen, I can't give up all my businesses. I make more money doing that <laughs> than becoming the president of the Lakers. So you know that 
I'm going to be in and out. Pause. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was about to say pause. <laughs> like, how he the fuck ma- you still giving them a job? No, I was going to say, he makes like a favor, like, just so you know. Yeah. I'm rich, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't need these duckies. <laughs> I'm doing you a favor. Yeah. So yeah. that's how I'm, that's how I heard that. Yeah. If that, I'm her, I'd, I'd have been like, mm, how you do you ain't. still hire him when you know that he's like, listen. That's his condition. This yeah. ain't what I got. I mean, like, he... You know what he, he, he laid it out. It out. He like did. it's not like he took the job and then was like, oh well, actually I gotta stay. Like, right? No, he said that's fair. Yeah. More than likely, she came to him like, I need you to run this for me. He's like, I'll do it, but understand, I got other business. Here's my conditions. Yeah, I feel you. All right. Is that okay with you? She said yes. I said, do I have the power to make decisions? Because that was important uh, for me to take the job as well. She said, you have the power to make the decisions. So um, I said, okay, let's go do it. She said, I'm going to put you with Rob Palenka, because I didn't know Rob. So she put us both together. Um, first year in, it was tremendous. I wanted the, the strategies to be, let's get up under the salary cap, because we were way over the salary cap. And um, I said, let's trade some people, get some draft picks, so on and on. D'Angelo, <coughs> you know, uh, great guard, but had a problem when uh, uh, Shaggy P and yes. the whole Nick... Shaggy P. Pause. <laughs> Get his nickname right, Magic. Yeah. Shaggy <laughs> P? Shaggy P. He sounds like Marv Albert out Two. here. He actually admitted to it, the bullshit that they kept denying is that they actually traded him because of that situation. That's it. Nothing didn't, else. Didn't they admit that before? Mm-hmm. I don't I think... They I didn't know they did. I thought they did admit it. That was the oh. reason. Never mind. Well, I think I they, just, they said like immaturity, but yeah. it was still, yeah. Right. It was I was they never right. said it, it was like they were saying just like immature yeah, things with the that. team, the not flat thing. out say, "Hey, this is why he's trading." Yeah. And like I, I mean, to. yeah. And I also think that is valid because like if you can't trust, like if his teammates aren't going to trust him, like mm-hmm. you got to get him out. Well, of here. Oh, no, I'm not mad about it right. because it's it either makes sense. you got to get rid of all his teammates or you got to get rid of him. So and they could they got what they wanted out of that trade. Yeah, Shaggy, Shaggy P had to go. <laughs> Sound like what they call a Scooby. If Scooby Doo was out now, he'd be like Shaggy <laughs> P and Scooby Doo. Okay, trying to be the cool. The whole thing went down, so I knew I had to get him out. We made some moves. That draft pick turned into Kyle Kuzma, so we felt good about making that deal. Drafted Lonzo Ball number two. I know you're still against it, but yes. we we can de- debate that Sorry. because I think he's outstanding uh, all around Stephen point Nathan. guard. Um, then. Uh, Josh Hart. So things got going in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And then I start hearing, you know, Magic, you're not working hard enough. Magic's not in the office. So people around the Laker office was telling me Rob was saying things. and Rob Palenka. Uh, Rob Palenka. And I didn't like those things being said behind my back that I wasn't in the office enough and so on and on. Um, so Wait, I started getting caught. Like, he had to say it behind your back because you weren't in the office. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe if you came into the office, he would say it to your face. Hey, hey brother, I you, should, never you should be here. Hey, he had an agreement with Jeannie. Jeannie he knew did. his hours. He did, and Rob knew. Rob should, hey, if my boss says if I can I take be off. Here, he gotta be she here. said, I'm going to link you with Rob. So Rob already knew his hours, too. He sounded so, like Red from uh, Five Heart. My office hours. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like they did shit backwards like they did with hiring Jason Kidd. It sounds like she wanted Rob Palenka as GM, but then also wanted Magic. And, like, a condition of Magic taking the job was it comes with Rob. And a condition of Frank Vogel taking it, or Ty Lue, first of all, taking the job was it got to come with Jason Kidd. So it's like you're already undercutting everybody's power by mm-hmm. bringing in people to go above somebody else. Mm-hmm. As a condition of the above person taking the job. So it's just, like, that's not a good way to run your organization. Also, my friends outside of basketball saying those things now were said to them outside of basketball. Now, not just in the Laker office anymore. Now it's in the media and so on. And these are people you trust. Exactly. And people got to remember something. Being in this business for over 40 years... I got allies. I got friends everywhere, right? And so, and then I had to monitor the brothers because Joey and Jesse wanted more involvement, wanted more power. The bus brothers. The bus brothers. Right. And so I said, I didn't these. mind doing that because they're good guys. But also I sat them down and said, hey, listen, I'm going to really help you guys mature and get better. And uh, so I took that role as well. 
because they felt they should have been, you know, in powerful positions, whether that's the general manager or the president, right? I'm going to pause that right there because now he's saying, like, not only was I president of basketball operations, I was, I was I'm sitting here this. mentoring Yosip, like, the <laughs> brothers, the, the brothers who want my job, but I'm still mentoring them. Just so you know, I'm doing this too. In addition to running my businesses, like, I'm generally managing the bus family. That's <laughs> what he said. Pretty much. And so um, then when those things start happening too much, Stephen A., the straw that broke the camel's back was I wanted to fire Luke Walton. And we had max three meetings. Um, I showed her <laughs> the things he did well and the things. He didn't do well. And I said, listen, we got to get a better coach. I like him. He's great. Former Laker, the whole thing. So the first day, well, let's think about it. Second day, okay, you can fire him. Then the next day, no, we should try to work it out. So when we went back and forth like that, and then she brought Tim Harris into the meeting, you know, some of the guys. And Tim you know, wanted me, he wanted to keep him because he was friends with Luke. And Luke's a great guy, mm-hmm. great guy. He is. And so when I looked up and said, wait a minute, I only really answer to Jeannie Buss. Right. Now I got Tim involved. And I said, it's time for me to go. I got things happening that was being said behind my back. I don't have the power that I thought I had to make the decisions. And I told them, when it's not fun for me, when I think that I don't have the decision-making power that I thought I had, then I got to step aside. And there you have it. So if you go back and listen to the interview, the Tim guy that he's <clears throat> mentioning, he ran the business, business side, side of the league. And he kept poking his head over into the basketball side. And I would feel the same way. Like, who, bro, stay over there. Mind your business. Do your shit. <laughs> like, nobody asks you questions about your shit. Don't come over here asking me questions about mine. Yeah, so, like, the cliff notes of all that is Magic felt like he wasn't able to actually do his job because there were too many cooks in the kitchen. That's what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. Too many cooks in the kitchen, and Rob Palenka betrayed him by talking about him behind his back. He actually called that out later. Steven asked him, like, who who, who betrayed you? And he was like, Rob Palenka. Right. He, was, he said, <laughs> he like, several catch, times. He could catch <laughs> these hands. Interviews. Anybody else? Just Rob. No, nobody else. Just Rob. Just Rob. (laughs) Just Rob. Only Rob. That's it. I still can't believe LeBron signed up for four years of this shit. Like, well, he thought Magic was going to be there. I, but Magic still, addressed like, that too. It, the dysfunction was there before he got there. Like, it's not that this was a, a winning organization in the Genie Bus era, like before <laughs> LeBron got here. It's not like true. And but you would think that he would have done his due diligence to see like somebody's coming he with didn't me, care. right? That's what I'm saying. Like he, I, he signed over his, the last years of his prime to this shit. Now, Ken, I'm yeah. going to ask you your feedback on all of this. What I will say while you you gather your thoughts, Rob Palenka did make a comment about it during <clears throat> Vogel's press announcement. Their press, you know, his welcome to. I the didn't media. see a single question for Frank Vogel. He had, mm. he took some, okay. but it was most of the Rob matter. Palenka. Yeah. <laughs> He said that Magic Johnson's allegations weren't true and that he had just spoken with his former boss two days ago about the Lakers handling the fourth pick in the lottery. Quote from Rob Palenka. I think the most important thing for me is the two years of being able to work side by side with Irvin. (laughs) (laughs) They are some of the greatest memories I have in sports and work. It's really saddening and disheartening to think he believes things are in this perception. I think all of us in life probably have been through things where maybe there's a third party. There's he said, she said things that aren't true. So these things are surprising to hear and disheartening. But I look forward to the opportunity to talk with him and sit down with him and work through them just like in any relationship. They are simply not true. I stand beside him. I stand with him as a colleague, as a partner. And I've always continued. I will always continue to support everything he's done and will continue to do. End quote. Spoken like a true agent. Yep. Go ahead, lay it, on, lay it on, Ken. How are you feeling about the latest things we've learned about the dysfunction in, in uh, L.A.? I mean, okay, when if, and when everything first popped off, my first initial reaction was to be pissed at Magic. 
Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, we were here for that. Exactly. I was like, because he did it just like in a blaze of glory, just fuck <laughs> y'all. Yeah. Like, he just pissed on it while I was on fire. He don't regret basically. it either. Exactly. So it was just like, you just gave zero fucks the entire he time. He died go be here. Yeah. I was like, bro, like, he out here acting a pure ass, like, for real. And I was like, I get it, but I, it, what you said, like, what Camille was saying and what you just said is like, it was too many cooks and yeah. they wouldn't let you do your job. And I mean, you could have done it a better way, but I can't blame you, bro. Like, if they ain't letting you do what you gotta do, I mean, you gotta move around. Mm-hmm. And it's good. I, I'm I, I'm actually glad that he airing out the dirty laundry, so people understand. Like, yo, it ain't sweet. Like, we something gotta happen. Right. So it's either the bus family clean this shit up and get it together, or they need to move around and have somebody else run this organization. Now, for brief context, for those who don't know, Rob Palinka is the GM of the Lakers, but he's also Kobe Bryant's former agent, which is how he got that job as a GM, because mm-hmm. he's actually cool with the buses, too. So he really didn't do shit in the NBA outside of, he used to play NBA agent for Kobe. Mm-hmm. That's it. So he, the he credentials. Played, he he was a walk-on in Michigan. Like, he ain't playing the NBA. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. And so his credentials he was, was a, Kobe. He was a member right. of the Fab Five team. Yeah. As a bench warmer, never yeah, played. he never <laughs> what, what did Jim Rose call him? They were like GPA, Viagra, or something like that. Like, Yikes. they used them like, to Boost pump there. up the team GPA. But mm. um, because he's <laughs> Magic said he's really smart. Yeah, he kept saying he's, no, like, he's I mean, super he's, smart. He's a super agent. Like he was he James Harden's be, agent yeah, yeah. also. Like it's not like he was just he was he had one client. Yeah, like I mean he had one of the clients though. No, no, no. I mean I, I'm just saying like he <laughs> he was more than just he was Kobe's more than agent. just Kobe Bryant's agent, right? He, I mean, it's just messy. There's too many people in 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 her ear. They got to mm-hmm. streamline that. And what Magic was asking to do wasn't beyond the realm of like. Like that's what trolls to do. Like yeah. when you're exactly. president, you bring in your guys. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If Luke wasn't his guy, Luke wasn't his guy. Mm-hmm. And he it, said he it, wanted Luke. Yeah, he wanted Tyron Luke, which it, makes me think like, it, is that your guy? Or is that LeBron's guy? And you were just trying to appease him. But mm-hmm. whatever the case, he wanted Luke. And um, Lou makes, either way, they need organizational like Structure. cohesion. Like yeah. they need to have a top down. Like there needs to be. So, everybody needs to be working in the same direction. It seems mm-hmm. like everybody's trying to pull the Lakers. To, to their direction. To their direction. And they're and overstepping their, their boundaries. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. people, like, why is the why is the business dude in the basketball meetings? At all. Yeah, like, that's, <laughs> at all. That's crazy. There's, like, no <laughs> reason the business side him. is the only one being successful at the moment, to be quite honest. But Still. Yeah. No, no, right. I mean, I get it. I'm just saying, like, that's probably how he got his foot in the door. Jeannie's like, like oh, yeah, I see, what he, I see what he's doing <laughs> with the business. Like, he's a really smart guy. Like, maybe he can help you know, lend some expertise to the basketball side. Because it's an organizational thing. Like, it's not necessarily mm-hmm. like he's in there scouting players or whatever. It's but like she got the Rambuses. Yeah. Phil Jackson, Phil Jackson still, still in there. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? He pulled Did Phil out. Up? Right. Like, right. Like, Phil he said up? Kobe's still in there. I'm sure. Because <laughs> Rob's in there. Like, he got a direct line to Rob. And Kobe probably not in there, like, directly. Rob, he's in there through Rob. He's a loud, yeah, yeah. Rob's his loudspeaker. He's microphone. out here being Vito Corleone. He's sitting here, like... <laughs> Pulling strings in the background. Yeah, he just... <laughs> Kobe said, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, th- I, I think... think. <laughs> and, and, like, I think that, in general, like, their biggest issue is Lakers exceptionalism. Like, they have the expectation that the Lakers are great and that they're just great because they are the Lakers. Like, they mm-hmm. are... They don't look at the work that had to go into being, being great. great. Being great. Mm-hmm. Like, they just got lucky. Not lucky, but they've gotten lucky throughout their existence where mm-hmm. they've had, like, prior to, like, Kobe's Achilles injury, like, they had made the playoffs all but, like, four years and 40 years. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so. It's just different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, they didn't evolve with the times of the NBA. Quick question. Lakers. Lakers organization or WWE organization? Which one is more in dysfunction? WWE. WWE. Yeah, WWE. Mm. I'll say WWE. Actually, no. I, guess I think with, that I, WWE's what? business is solid. Shape, the business, the is business straight, side is good. The, it's ethnic, always the ethnics of WWE is the problem. And the product is actually starting to suffer. But that's not because of dysfunction. That's because their leader thinks what they're doing is the best course of action. And it's just not. Yeah, like they, they're, they're on the other end of that spectrum where they are like just – not top down, like they are one person just dictates everything that's going on, and because his vision is kind of starting to go away from where the it product needs to be going, <laughs> um, that's that's creating a problem. So like I, I don't, I guess I said it like you know that end all be all is one guy making decisions, but it needs to be like there needs to be structure. And the other just, side, it needs to be structure. Checks and balances. Yeah. <laughs> checks and different balances. different types of structures right. for both yeah. of those organizations. Like it needs to be mm-hmm. one decision maker that. Fair enough. 
All right, so um, Pacers free agent Tyreek Evans um, has been dismissed. Uh, has been dismissed and disqualified um, from the league for violating the terms of the NBA MB, MBPA anti drug program. Um, he's eligible to apply for reinstatement in two years. So, like, hey, he got OJ Mayo. Yep. Yeah, that sucks. So, if you don't know what that means exactly, so stay off the weed. Not even that. It's not. It's not no, marijuana. No, it's, it's worse not, than that. It's not weed. It's worse than that. When you get kicked out the league, coke, dope, crack, smack. I'm like, yeah, literally, the, <laughs> literally. That's the list. Uh, opioids. What was opi- methamphetamine? Methamphetamine. How old is Terry Gibbons? Going on thirty. Okay. He's still young. Exactly. That's what I said. So after the year he had to, mm-hmm. basically the same age as OJ Mayo was when he got popped. And Wasn't he was, part of the same class? No. And that was the end of his career. Damn. This is <laughs> this is a picture of him. He looks he like... He looks high as shit. God damn. You saw it. Mm-hmm. Overall, what I do want to say is that I, I do applaud the, uh, the Pacers. The statement they put out said they were looking to work with him through this. So even though he was a free agent and even though he has been kicked out of the league, the Pacers aren't going to turn their back on him, which I think is very, very important. Mm-hmm. Because um, when you're a part of team sports your whole life, and then you come on hard times, the last thing you need is to not have your your structure. So applause. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, so what he was on is apparently either uh, what we said, or cocaine, or LSD. I think codeine is one of those two. Uh, that's the opioids. Oh, okay, I believe. Or is that an uh, amphetamine? Whatever. It's in one of them I categories. Don't know drugs. <laughs> So, yeah. I don't one know. Them, them, I don't them know them about them drugs. I don't know about that. Um, that's some. That's some wild stuff. Whatever it is, I hope he. I hope he gets help for it. I hope he's for sure. I hope, I hope his life is in order. And like, I hope he finds some personal peace. Yeah. Through it all. Let's knock this WWE out. <laughs> Body breathing in all heavy. All right. So, but, can I say say something before you even get to it? Go ahead. Like I wasn't trying to guilt anybody else. Oh, you did. <laughs> it's a boycotting WWE. <laughs> Like, that was not my intention. Yeah, like people, you, people in the group was like, "I'm canceling my right, I'm done, bro. <laughs> <It's> done." <laughs> so I'm I'm sorry for being a buzzkill in your enjoyment of WWE. Buzz Killington. So yeah, have fun. Have fun. Have at but, it. Um, first, uh, Ric Flair news. Ric Flair was hospitalized, and there was many rumors about his health. The first report was that he was uh, hospitalized after suffering a medical emergency. Next, another source said the reports on the condition of his health were overblown. This was a scheduled procedure. His wife cleared his wife cleared it up. He was taken to the hospital on Thursday morning after health complications, which then delayed his planned medical procedure. His procedure was a success, and he's currently in recovery. So, Ric Flair is all good to go, guys. Yep. Um, that, that's your turn. That was that's a whole thing. We missed money in the bank. Yeah, that's a whole different point. It say pick one to read. Oh shit, hell. Okay. <laughs> go ahead, Eric. He was excited. About <laughs> he was. That's why I had to stop. Him I said we were going to take out WWE in one fell swoop. Yeah, I thought that's what we were doing. You um, said that too, but no. Out. I said when you talked about money in the bank, I didn't say anything about Ric Flair. Okay. I don't know. Okay, uh, <laughs> oh, damn, you deleted it. Uh, shout out to Penny Hardaway. Um, he's the head coach at University of Miss University of Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee. Penny. <laughs> he uh, Penny. he got a commitment from five star <laughs> prospect Precious Achu Achua. Ooh, bless you. I don't know. <laughs> <It's like Chua. laughs> but yeah, that uh, commitment, in addition to number one pros- number one rated prospect, uh, James Wiseman and four-star Boogie Ellis, a number of other highly re- decorated recruits, like Memphis now has the number one recruiting class in the nation for 2019-2020 season. This is Penny's first season. Like He hasn't even coached a game yet, so he gonna have he's doing work hopes. real early. Plenty of open gyms right now. <laughs> so hopefully he can coach as good as he recruits. Remember coaches used to do that shit? They used to have open gyms because they knew they couldn't have sanctioned practices, so they just have an open gym. Mm-hmm. That shit used to be funny. Why are you blowing up the spot? <laughs> <laughs> that was years ago. You know, times changed. That was a decade they ago. They changed. So I was going to say, we know a couple of high school coaches. You got you. <laughs> hey, hey, we're going to move on. We're going to yeah. move on. Uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Playoffs. The Boston Bruins swept the Carolina yeah. Hurricanes, so they're going to represent the East in the Stanley Cup Finals. Boo. Well, the St. Louis Blues. I love that name. St. Louis Blues. Like, that's just a cold team name, the St. Louis Blues. They have a 2-3 lead on the San Jose Sharks. Game six is Tuesday night. Cool. 
Can't. Yeah, I don't know. My bad. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 oh, yeah, I don't know. All right. Um, Arizona's eight-time Pro Bowl cornerback Patrick Peterson is being suspended. Um, the first eight games of the 2019 season for violating the NFL's performance enhancing drug policy. That's wild. Yeah. Who else out? Um, then we got the Eagles um, defensive end Chris Long, the reigning uh, Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year, is calling in a career after <coughs> my oh, bad. Really? after eleven <laughs> seasons. <laughs> he retiring, huh? Sorry, wait. yeah. Just to interject. Uh, EJ Manuel also retired. Did he really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I think that's just because he probably couldn't get a job anymore. But, uh, yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. All right. And then um, the New York Jets um, traded linebacker um, Deron Lee to Kansas City uh, for DL for defensive. Nope, 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 nope. No? Wait. I don't remember what he was traded for. He just oh, okay. got traded. Okay, he just got traded. Cool. Leonard Williams is also on the trade block. Trade block. And there you have it. That kind of would have made more sense if we did the other NFL stuff first, but we'll get to it. Yeah. <laughs> is it my go? Yep. How low can we go? Back to the WWE. <laughs> How low can, How low we, go? can we go? Back to the <laughs> WWE. <laughs> I was going to say, it's Efforts. appropriate. Money in the bank recap. This is how it went. Okay. One, did anybody else watch it besides me? I did not. It? So we had it on on the, uh, the iPad, but yeah. I was really watching the Bucks. Fair enough. I was, I had a, the WWE on Like TV. I would look down and be like, oh, that's, that's how this ended. And I would look back up. <laughs> I had most of the noise as the Bucks game, so I could kind of like keep looking back and forth and shit. I had a WWE on my phone. But um, what did you think of the pay per view that you did see then? I didn't see it. Oh, <laughs> I just you saw know, who won. It was cool. And even the, those matches, I'm like, I don't really. Yeah, you didn't have to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> it was, there's a couple title changes, you know, but it was pretty boring. I saw the ending for, the for sure, part. for sure. When Wait, Brock what, came out, what uh, what title change? Oh, um, okay. sorry, wrong. I thought you knew. So that no, was. Becky Lynch lost her title to Charlotte. She Which one? The Smackdown, Smackdown title. title. Oh, for real? Yeah, but then Bailey won the Money in the Bank match. Okay. And cashed in and beat Charlotte for the title. Oh, for real? So oh, Bailey the Smackdown champion. Oh, that's dope. That's I what like, I said. I was like, you know I what? Like Bailey. I'll take Bailey if Becky ain't got the belt. Yeah. I'll take Bailey. Like not Charlotte. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> um, who else wrestled? Shane the Miz was terrible. I bet. That shit was trash. Oh, I'm tired of seeing it. Yeah, that too. <laughs> they should have ended at WrestleMania. It was yeah, a great match like, there. That was. It was a great match. Did you throw his dad in the situation? Uh, uh, Roman and Elias had a squash match. They squashed my boy Elias in like nine <laughs> seconds. Yeah, it was who? Uh, Roman Reigns and Elias. That should have uh-huh. been a good match. It should have been, but mm-hmm. they squashed him. I was uh-huh. like, damn, Roman got a squash on pay-per-view against Elias? Damn. I, I, Sam was like, damn. I don't see that's what I said too. Daniel Bryan was on the pre-show. What the fuck? Oh, for oh real? but they had the uh, Cruiserweight title. Oh, for no, 205 sure. Live. Wait, they had another squash match. Lars Sullivan squashed the Lucha uh, House Party, but Daniel Bryan was on a pre-show? Let me let me just... This is what I'm t- fucking Vince, dog. Dumb shit. So, Wait, so the racist dude just squashed a bunch of minorities? Yes. Yeah. No, how about... Okay. That's what we said. Right. I was like, Vince, don't give a fuck, bro. No, he, know, <laughs> he, he know what he's doing. Zero fucks. He knows what he's doing. So. Fuck him. Yeah, Rey Mysterio beat Samoa Joe, though. Yes, that was the title that changed. U.S. title. It wasn't a great match, apparently, to this recap. And Although this this recap says that Shane and Miz was a B. Fuck out of here. That shit was boring. The crowd was chanting awful. Ah! They were chanting awful. This mm. is awful. It was terrible. Get my but, back. Um, so Sami Zayn had beat Braun Strowman earlier in the week to take his spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Braun Strowman hung him up by his ankles. <laughs> <laughs> so the eighth spot was not known. Somebody was going to take it. Um. The latter match was great up to the point where Brock Lesnar is the eighth person that come in, tipped over uh, Mustafa Ali, and is the new Money in the Bank winner. So now Brock Lesnar has a suitcase and cash in at any time. Why, bro? Why do they keep doing this shit? <sighs> so I do want to add to that. Um, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> there are reports Why? coming out that Triple H is livid behind the scenes with the direction of the company. And... Me and the mayor were making jokes, and he was like, of course he's livid. He's probably back there going, like, Batista, like, you know what I want? <laughs> Give me what I want. <laughs> no, that's not what I want. <laughs> I want the company. <laughs> NXT, that's not what I want. No. Get your own ass out of here. Give me the shit. He needs to if he wants the chance to win. <sighs> I don't believe in Vince. No. How old is Vince now? Man. He's in the 70s, he almost 80s. 78. Old. Move around, bro. You had a great run. I think he just turned 70. I said 78 but yeah, he look I mean look Vince McMahon was at his peak during the Attitude Era mm-hmm. like yeah like genius and 
And he wasn't like a hundred percent always hitting mm-hmm. Gina's. Like he had a lot of misses. He's seventy three, yeah. by the way. He turned seventy four this year. Old enough. Too old, I think. <laughs> to move, he need more room. It's just it, wrestling's different now. Yeah, it is. It's different same, audience. Same thing I said about fucking Marv Albert. Time comes for everybody. <laughs> like it, it's, sometimes it's just time to move around. Like you ain't, you don't have a fastball anymore, and it's cool. Like sit move. back, enjoy your millions, or go do your XFL. Like go do something else. Like. I Focus feel like your heart really isn't in the wrestling anymore, mm-hmm. and like now it's just because that's what you do. It's just a business now, right? Mm-hmm. Now it's just a job. Mm-hmm. So the XFL probably is his change of direction, maybe. Mm-hmm. But exactly. if he wants that to succeed, he needs to let the WWE succeed because that's where he's going to be bankrolling most of his funds from. So he needs to chill out and let Triple H take care of it and get him some money. So the reason that we're talking Triple about Triple H, right. H, right, taking over is because in part AEW and TNT announced a new TV and streaming deal. So, All Elite Wrestling, that's AEW, they will have a show that will air weekly on TNT beginning this fall. The date and time is currently unknown. It's probably going to be Mondays. I, I don't know if they... They might do Tuesday. No, they, they, they were shooting for like a Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, they were shooting for a Tuesday. SmackDown's moving off Tuesdays. Mm. And it's smart at this point for a new upstart Startup. company to not mm-hmm. be on the exact same day. Yeah. Like, it makes sense. So, their first pay-per-view, Double or Nothing, will be available via BR Live on Saturday, May 25th. So, the Saturday. This Saturday. Bleach your report live. I'm proud of AEW. I'm happy for it. Yeah, that was dope. I didn't realize they had Earl <coughs> I was like, hmm, mm-hmm. Earl's still roughing? They picked up Earl. They picked up Jim Ross. <laughs> <laughs> he Earl got three years with him. Like, His Earl picture was hilarious, dog. Well, like, he been through some exactly. things. Exactly. He, he just he just finished a fifth of hand. Yeah, Jericho <laughs> over there. <laughs> Kenny got, Omega. Kenny Omega. The Cody fucking, Rhodes. Uh, Young Bloods. They gonna have Young Bucks. Young Bucks. Yeah. It's um Young Bloods. What is Gold Dust's real name? Damn wheel. Dusty. Oh, any, <laughs> is it Dustin? Dustin, Dustin Rhodes? right? Yeah. Dustin Rhodes. Gold Dust. Gold We're Dust. gonna have Dustin and Cody fighting each other as well. They had a really good match last time they uh, fought each other. Cody, I like Cody. Cody fought each other in WWE. Is that, had, that's his that wife? was the Stardust versus Gold Dust no. shit. But oh, yeah, they gave yeah. it to us too late. Yeah, yeah, way too late. When they both were hot, that's when they should have did it. When they thought everybody, yeah, yeah, they messed up. They did it like right after their run was over. <laughs> Nobody cares. I just want to point out with AEW coming on, which I think is great that um, WWE's gonna have some more comp. Mm-hmm. Something that bothers me about WWE is just how they they frame their storylines. I won't spend too much time on this, but what I just want to say is like when we were watching Attitude Era, there was a uh, like a main event like level, there was a mid card, and then there were the filler guys. Mm-hmm. And if you were a main event guy, you feuded with main event guys, and y'all just kept switching it around. Yeah. You might get demoted, you might get promoted, but you stayed there. Mm-hmm. The fact that Daniel Bryan was the champion mm-hmm. and he is now on a pre-show makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. It makes no sense. That's fair. Like, you know how livid I would have been as a kid if The Rock lost his title and then he was on Sunday Night Heat? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it? Damn, like, I'm come on, But you'd man. be surprised to see him on Sunday Night that's Heat. That's what I'm saying. But then like, you'd be like, wait, what the fuck is this? Build up your card so that when someone is not in title contention, there are still other people of their caliber they can feud with. Like, just do your job. Triple H knows this. Do your job. I feel like they have too many. The issue is probably that they have too many guys. So, like, when you're not in the main event feud, like, there really isn't anything for you to do. Because, like, you still have to you, you still have to feed, like, the mid card title. You still have the tag title. You still have a women's title. You have a women's tag title. You have Cruiserweight. You have... That's why the Cruiserweights you know I mean? have their own show. Right, right, right. But I mean, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, they have a whole lot more miles to feed now than they did back then. Mm-hmm. Which you would think would make keeping those tiers clear easier. But it's like, it's either you're off TV or you get demoted. So now the writers are complaining that Vince is cutting them off on a lot of shit, too. So no, they, sure. they said they've he had is. a bunch of shit. He changes stuff all the time. So they probably do have these stories for these guys, and Vince is just killing this company. Or, like, they will react to something in real time, like, not see the process out. So, it's like, if you're building a storyline and you have a one-week blip in the ratings because, like, it's something they just new. They Or, <laughs> it, you know, like, or it could be, like, there's a, a really good football game on or, you know, like, it's a holiday or something. Like, there's something, there, there's, there are extenuating circumstances, like, that could be, lottery. like, completely, like, have nothing to do with the quad- product quality of the product mm-hmm. but like they attribute it to that so then they just kill the storyline completely or they throw some wrench into it that doesn't make sense logically mm-hmm. and just like like you can't do long term long term storytelling because like they are so reactionary and you won't win that way WWE no <laughs> wait <laughs> no it was on 10 yeah it was that's just, that was my I question. went yeah I went I know oh, you that was yours because you skipped over me <laughs> He was doing uh, Money in the my Bank fault. and then you did that's what threw fault. me off I was like wait <laughs> for some reason I thought it was after Tim oh uh-huh. I thought we was out of order. T C E K. 
<laughs> no, I'm at Twitch. Uh, the Dallas Wings traded Liz Cambage uh, to the Las Vegas Aces. That's nice. For Mariah, Mariah Jefferson, Isabel Harrison, and two draft picks. One first, one second. Uh, Cambage is... I don't think she won MVP, but she's like an all, all-star center for... Well, mm-hmm. she was for Dallas. Uh, so now that's Liz... Uh, what's Asia, Wilson. Asia Wilson, mm. Kelsey Plume. Mm. They got a nice little squad in Vegas. What I will say is, I was like, it's a nice move for Vegas, but I was actually a little sad because I liked what Dallas had because you had mm. Liz and you had Skylar Diggins. Mm-hmm. And, now and then they had drafted, yeah. Enrique Agumbawale. Uh, so I was like, oh, Enrique was about to be on the squad with Liz yeah. and Skylar. He's about to be ball- I mean, Skylar's not even playing this season, I she believe. Just had baby, she's right? had a baby, so she's <laughs> not playing. Mm. So now it's like, well, I guess we're going to see a lot of. Uh, Minutes from our rook. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably also why they brought in another guard, Mariah Jefferson. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, that's WNBA loop. Actually, you know, I'll just loop this in. Also, WNBA uh, named their first commissioner. Like previously, they just had a president. Uh, it's Kathy Engelbert. That's She's the w- former CEO of Deloitte. That's weird that they never had a commissioner to me, but yeah. I'm glad. They- I'm sure it's probably the same job duties. They just have a different title. Yeah. Well, since we're out of order, you go ahead, Ken, and then we'll get back on track. All right. Um, I'm going to save that one for when you do that. Because um, <laughs> you already know it's going to be exactly lit. I know exactly. It's going to be lit right there, Joe. So. Wait, do we have a song this week? Well, Dame's still in the playoffs, technically, so we're going to do another Dame. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. Right. Next hour. This okay, is- so wait. He's one for one. He's one and one yeah, right now. One and one. one and one. What do you one mean and one and one? Because oh, the first song. one, the first song was a banger. The one last week was two chains yeah. saved him barely. But it's not. It's not radio. It's no, it's not. It's Ken's Ken, Ken, I was just asking. Yeah. All right. Uh, the NBA is expected to move up. Uh, to, why are you looking at me like that? Um, the NBA is expected to, <laughs> to move up to start its annual, was it moratorium? Yeah. Um, from midnight on July 1st um, to 6 p.m. on June 30th, sources told MB, um, ESPN. The move will shift the league away from any acquainted system by allowing teams to start, my bad, hold on, to start um, talking to players at a reasonable hour. Instead of calling me at midnight. Yeah, that's fair. Hey, I was beating some cheeks. What the fuck you want? Come on, son. Don't <laughs> 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 you hate that motherfuckers call you in the middle of hitting some cheeks? Like, fucking, what you calling me for, bro? Fuck out of here. Just don't answer that. Right, like, you ever answer why hitting also, some cheeks? I'm pretty sure uh, like, yeah. nobody, that shit was fun. Is, no, uh-huh. nobody that's a free agent is going to be busy at 12.01 on July 1st. They're answer. waiting for the phone yeah, call. Yeah, I will be waiting for that phone call. You ever pick you up the phone? You're going to call me. So you would miss the phone you call? You're going to miss, you gonna call you gonna miss call a multi-million dollar oh, bag. Oh, hell no. They're going to call me. They want me. You got Shit. all 364 hey, days they the rest of the year. They want me. They want me. Them cheeks can wait. All right. <laughs> <laughs> She'll understand. Exactly. It's really going to be some clapping when, when right. I get this bag. <laughs> <laughs> you saw Russ? Russ' whole persona changed right. now. That motherfucker. Now. now. He a whole different Wait, person. what's his IG name? I seen his IG name. I was he like, this motherfucker. No, it's the bro. same Oh, that's what they say out here. What was his IG name? Like, it's dangerous. like Russ the Range or something uh, like that. Russ. Dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah, Dangerous. Dangerous Russ Wilson. That's what it, it's been now. Dangerous Russ. He out here. He finna have an album. He finna drop an album next week. You see his cover album? His R&B? Yeah, he had the fur coat and shit in front of the, uh, <laughs> the Range Rover and shit. So like, Baby Future's birthday was sometime this week. Oh yeah, and like Russell had like this long, like eloquent, like "Oh, I love you" and blah blah blah. I'm so glad to be in part of your life. And then Future hey. like had a Meek Mill bar. Like, exactly. Yeah, he just quoted about a Rolex that he gave him. He gave him like a what five million dollar Rolex, something like that. I was like, all right, bro, that cost that much. No, I don't know what he he was stunned. Yeah, like he spends a whole bunch of money we'll on, on, one, on Rolex, one watch, on Rolex. Like, bro, he looked off. excited to get it. Yeah, but kids, you know, they been they excited to, to get, get anything. Get it. All right, I don't. I just quickly went to Russ's Instagram out of curiosity, <laughs> and it's a picture of him. It looks like it is in front of a G wagon <laughs> <laughs> in a fur coat. And it's not a fur coat. Here. It's a winter. It's a winter parka. But he has three different pictures. He <laughs> out here, yo. And each caption, hey, dude, you seen these motherfuckers? He out oh, here, bro. First caption. It's a G thing. Ah, <laughs> okay. he out okay. here. Not even thing. It's things. Thing. Second one is the it's the G wagon and it's a fountain, and he just put the drip emoji. Ah, this motherfucker here got his bag. Don't know how to fucking act. He I've been here. waiting to be this way. The third picture says, <laughs> "Told y'all, just getting started." Hashtag new season. Ah, <laughs> this motherfucker here does. He not gonna lie. He been waiting. He just I, wanted his bag. I like this, Russ. I'm not going to lie to you. He the coldest cold switcher ever. Yeah. <laughs> that motherfucker, we thought he was Tiger Woods level. Yeah. That yeah. motherfucker was like, nah, bro, I just needed my bag. 
<laughs> See, I kind of felt it because I've seen some videos of Russ probably like, that don't sound like you. Like, it was a video a while ago where Sierra had on his high school jersey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was talking, he goes, uh, I'm going to give you another baby. He's like, you're lucky I didn't know you in high school. Uh, the fuck? We would have had plenty kids by now. She's sitting there like, stop, Russ. Hey, Russ is probably running through Madison. Running through oh, Madison. Oh, yeah, you already know. Of I think he was married to that white girl. Nah, was he was. I don't know if they met at Madison, but he had he had him a... a Never mind. A flock of bunnies. I was going to say something. <laughs> a litter. <laughs> he, he deaf. A snow pile. <laughs> <laughs> Who turn is it? We don't know where we at. Uh, That was Ken. So I just went so we So does I. It is I. MLB Players of the Week. This week we have Vlad Jr. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. for the Toronto Blue Jays. And an AL. And then in the NL we have Josh Bell for Pittsburgh. Can right. leave it at that. Yeah, you got no stats. I did, but then I changed the screen. Now I don't feel like going back. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. And some uh, some news that'll make Ken happy. Uh, Gail Benson, the owner of the New Orleans Pelicans, said that she will reportedly <laughs> well reportedly said that she would trade Anthony Davis to the Lakers, quote, over my dead body. Yep, <laughs> and um, kill him. How about that? <laughs> hey, die. Whoa. Die. Whoa. Just go off die. Fuck Listen. him, dog. Die. <laughs> <laughs> then we gonna get him. Then what? Goddamn, we gonna be. Hernandez. Then we gonna be right there. Like, oh, we got him. How about that? Wow, you you gonna kill people? Yeah, for oh, he's old they, as hell. Fuck him. It's a woman. It's a woman. My guy. They old as hell. I said <laughs> they old as hell. Fuck him. Okay. I mean, I'm you, not gonna you, be hey, part you of out them. here known for fighting old women. So, hey, bro, chill <laughs> up, bro. One incident, bro. <laughs> <laughs> One in- and I did not <laughs> hit the woman. You ran up on the old beat by her, ass old bitch. I mean, I'm just saying, wasn't that you? I, yeah. I'm sorry, sir. And I quote, she wasn't too old to get her ass whipped. That's and all I'm saying. I quote. <laughs> that's all I said. Beat my ass, old bitch. Was that not you? She said she was gonna whoop my ass. So I was like, whoop my ass, sir, old bitch. <laughs> was that you? Shit, I bet it would have been the first and last time I get my ass whooped by old bitch. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case. The thoughts and opinions of Gay Harris are his alone. And his do not alone. reflect the hey, rest man. of the technical was, that, files. That was a rough day. I'm a better me now. <laughs> Ask the debate. <laughs> Damn. Okay. So, um, Dennis Rodman had a story. I need the audience. Yes. I've been waiting for this. I know you have. Oh, you, my God. You sound like Tim. Shout out to... Uh, <laughs> hey, can't wait to... <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to talk about him. <laughs> Chill out, dude. <laughs> Oh, that's Who posted hilarious. this in our group? Uh, <laughs> Darren. Darren, shout out to Darren. He posted a clip from oh, Vice man. where um, I love Vice, the network actually. Dennis Rodman was telling a story about um, some injuries that he sustained. Yes, three different times he sustained this injury. <gasps> oh. <laughs> three of them, dog. Three. So we're gonna play this, and then I have some questions. Yeah. <laughs> I'll read the ox on. Hey, this is Dennis Rodman. Let me show you how to break your dick. What ways. the fuck? I was on a boat one time in Dallas, Texas. They go out there all day long, you know, in the sun, drinking, drinking, party, party, party. Go to the bar out there at night, drunk as a mother. This, this, this. My girlfriend, and I, whatever. We in the back, we in the back of the boat, the big king size bed. You know, she said we gotta have sex. She loves sex. So I, just try, I think I'm going to try something different. She said, go over there. Walk over there. I said, okay, I'll walk over there. <laughs> she said, I want you to run and jump in my pussy. I said, all right, great. Nose that I'm going to run on the boat. And I die like this. And what do we do? I'm like, oh, blood everywhere. I mean, blood oh. everywhere. I mean, no sooner I did that shit, that, you just said it's popping all over you. She's a white girl. He's just soaking up with blood all over and she's screaming, screaming, oh my God, he's dead, he's dead. I can't with him, oh my God. And I said, no, <laughs> honey, man, I just broke, I just broke my day. <laughs> I was playing for Detroit. Second time. We were playing uh, the Rockets and this girl named Tracy, she flew down to see me, so we had dinner. She said, yeah, da, 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 da. And she brought this book, said, you know what? I said, why are you reading the book? She said, no, I got to learn how to suck a dick. This she was, how hey, listen. Suck dick in two different ways. I, I saw that book, I said, oh, no. So, she turns around, push back on me, I'm your heart. And I push at the wall like that, push back, crack. Another one. <laughs> Blood everywhere. <laughs> Couldn't do anything. I mean, your dick still get hard, you know, but it's just kind of, it don't get straight, it just gets kind of like that. Like a, like a big like carrot, you know. Third time. Then the third time, it was in New York. Same girl. Samantha. Same thing. <laughs> go to the hotel room, having sex, and it's in up. Go to the hospital. Mm. My girlfriend's like, well, you know, he has a problem with his 
his penis. And the woman comes up and she's like, oh, okay, great. I'll be right back. She brings another doctor in. <laughs> oh, I know what that is. Brings another doctor. I swear to God, she kept bringing people in. Why? So she brought eight people in to see it. And so I said, dude, I know what it is, so just give me a pill for it. No, we're just making, we're just making sure that you're okay. I said, I know what it is. Give me a pill for it. It'll be done in three weeks. You know, in doctor's terms, you have a contused penis. Contused. I said, come on. He said, well, you broke your dick. Because your dick don't bend that way. Mm. It don't even bend that way. It don't bend at all. <laughs> I don't know what talking about, right? <laughs> a day later, my girlfriend gets a call at the hotel. The nurse that was in the hospital. Oh, uh, yeah, you know what? We're going to sell this picture for $25,000. Can you help us out? How about that one? They took pictures of my whatever, and she had a <laughs> She was going to give it to the National Enquirer and everybody like that, so she sold it for $25,000. But she wanted $25,000 for me. And my girl was like, sell them. <laughs> That's kind of shit right there. That's the easy shit. Oh, I'm good to go now. I'm good to go, man. Shit. It's all good. Take a pill. It's three times I did that and broke my dick. <laughs> Yikes! That is crazy. Yikes! One, I didn't know dicks could break. Like, I thought it was a muscle, so, like... It is Like, a it can't... <laughs> it's just how, a ruptured muscle, dude. Like, how, how did... How? How? And where was the blood from? Like, what is happening? That's... A, I mean, it's, it's blood when, you get, me, when so. you get hard. Like, I know, it, it, that's what makes it yeah. erect. The blood, yeah, and, and to the I, muscle. So, he had, he tore a muscle. So, I like, did the skin... Do. Like, did the skin break? It like, had to... Yikes! I don't know. But well, unless it was coming out of the still, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just amazed at the fact that he literally tried to jump in the pussy. <laughs> like that's the crazy, like full headed, full headed steam, bro, from across the room. How tall you just thought, know? like, how did both, how high was y'all? Look. That y'all thought that this is a good idea for you to jump, for you to run full speed into some pussy. That don't sound comfortable for either. Part. That no. doesn't. Like who? I, he his dick. I unless he has a huge <laughs> vagina, I don't know. That, if he had a, uh, uh, it's uh, just uh, physics. Yeah. Like there's that no way work. that that's gonna work it's not out. Gonna end well, beneficial Mm-mm. to anybody. So Yikes. whatever he was on, three man. times, three. Ooh. And he just said it so matter of factly. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. just give it's me a pill. It'll be all right. Three weeks. The easy shit. I've, I've done it <laughs> numerous of times. You know, Dude, whatever. He has like, a fragile. When penis. we get uh, Dennis Rodman's memoirs, like that shit is. It's going gonna be filth, bro. Nothing but filth, dog. It's gonna be filth in that motherfucker, dog. Because he was with Carmen Electra for a minute, bro. He was with Madonna. Broken. It's penis. gonna be huge. It's gonna be. I don't filled. think you gonna look that up. I mean, what's the worst thing? They ain't gonna show right, no They gonna show the most shocking <laughs> hey, ass. Was you looked already, did you? I oh, should have yeah, seen Eric's face when he looked. At him. Oh, <laughs> he was yeah, like, I'm no. Sorry. Oh, like, they supposed to go like this. Like it looked like that. Oh, oh, wait, no, 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 sorry, I went the wrong way. It go like no. Oh, Jesus. Okay, Christ. there's a diagram. I understand how penises work. Yes. Oh. Okay. Blood vessels. I. Mm-hmm. Yep. I get that. The sound of a broken penis. The sudden tearing of that sheath is the same as popping a balloon with the prick of a pen. Pop. No. <laughs> a loud pop. Yikes. How do you, how, I couldn't even react though. Mm-hmm. Like I'll be as pure I, like, yeah, I, I would have passed out. Yeah. Probably, <laughs> I would have immediately passed out like, oh shit. Oh, fuck. You ever got kicked in the nuts? Oh yeah. That's, Are there that, pictures of broken bruh. penises? That's what made me start wearing cups playing baseball. I got hit this <laughs> twice. <laughs> I was like, never again. No, I said, have you got kicked in the nuts? Oh, no, I never. No, I ain't never. I ain't never. You, somebody kick you in the nuts? Like what three is times. That? What is no, I ain't never been kicked in the nuts, though. That shit wild, Let me bro. see. I ain't want to see it's it. Like a, it's like okay. it's what literally Jesus broken. Christ. Damn. Wait, is that one they cut one off put on the table? No. <laughs> 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 axe murder and shit is that? They, they just cut the dick off put on the table. Like, <laughs> this is how I look. Like, God damn. All right. <sighs> Let's move on. Yeah, don't Google it. Y'all Google that. Let's y'all move on. I need to get this out of my search history. Hey, what? <laughs> the bear gonna happen again? What the fuck is you like? What you want? What kind of freaky stuff? It's like you might as well go to Lamar Odom. Oh yeah, you already know. Um, speaking of dick, <laughs> um, Lamar Odom made a claim that he has slept with more than two thousand women in his life in his in his lifetime while um, talking about his sexuality. Addiction. His sex addiction. I'm sex. Oh, yeah. he's sex sexuality. <laughs> that, that's hey, what that's right, that's, mm-hmm. that that's what made me hesitate. Like, oh, Ron Burgundy. Sex addiction. I'm Ron Burgundy. But yeah, um, so Lamar said he he, he has hooked up with over two thousand women. What do you guys think about that? Putting Wolf to shame. Oh. No, Wolf said a hundred thousand. He said a hundred thousand. Did he say a hundred thousand? He he really said it. A- I thought like, well that's what kids like everybody was like. It's physically impossible. Like they did the <laughs> math. Like it's like if you divide how many days he was on Earth. As a, he spent his entire life fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. If you like, they had that. to all be like five something. Yeah. And then it's just like That's stroke, stroke, not stroke. Not out move. the realm of. Resp- 
I mean, especially during his era too. There was peace, they, love, and soul. And we know the Guinness World Record is not what nine nineteen. That's for different partners. How many diseases though? Wait, no, that's one different partners at one time. There's no oh, way yeah. you get out of that without at least one disease. Oh no, yeah, yeah, he, had, he definitely had. Let's say he has multiple diseases. He has probably some new mutant shit, <laughs> and that, that, that's pretty good named after him. Some extra shit. shit? That's yeah. crazy. That's I bet you, like honestly. Two thousand for NBA, for NBA I guess player that travels like more all realistic. year long and doesn't really give a fuck. Will said superstar? twenty twenty thousand oh, was both claims. Twenty thousand. That's still a that's lot. Still, that's still. Like, like that's ten times what Lamar. Do you said. do you can't even enjoy it though? After if you're doing it twenty two thousand, no, like, it's, some people, it's, it's not, not even it's not, enjoyable it's not anymore. Physical. Like, yeah. that's definitely like like it's, it's sex addiction. Like it's it's he yeah. just doing it just to like neurologic. That's crazy. That's wild. Two thousand Lamar. I want. I just want to know how many on drugs. Like how many of them, or how many times was he? The drugs probably helped. Yeah, drugs had to help. Isn't that you're not a sober person is just going to be like, oh yeah, I got two thousand. Like I feel like you were rubbing raw at that, like <sighs> from friction. <laughs> Yikes! Talk, talk about chafing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so take us take us back somewhere else. Oh, uh, let's go to the big four. <laughs> big four. Uh, big big three. I'm sorry. Big big three. I seen four. I seen big. Okay, Big oh, 3 see. League has four. That's why I was seeing okay, Big 4. Got you, got you. He still got dick on the brain. No, you know he can't the, act. Motherfucker, you know shut your ass up. The Big 3 League has four cities to announce still, and they are at their ask for fans' input. So the question is, where would you like for them to go for, of the following cities? Okay. Denver, mm-hmm. Miami, mm-hmm. Phoenix, mm-hmm. Seattle, mm-hmm. Sacramento, mm-hmm. Cincinnati, mm-hmm. Portland, yep. Milwaukee, mm-hmm. New Orleans, mm-hmm. San Juan, mm-hmm. Minneapolis, and SLC, whatever that is. Salt, Salt Lake, Lake City. City. Oh, Salt Lake City. There um, we go. Milwaukee, of course. It's four. Oh, <laughs> Milwaukee. One's Milwaukee, you know? One, one I will say for sure, Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. I, Probably well, Denver. I, was say, I know the ones that I like. I mean, I don't live in any of these other cities, so I don't really yeah, care. Yeah, that's what I said. One's Milwaukee. I was thinking more stuff for like, the players, so I was like, oh. Miami, of course, would be one for them. Yeah. I said Sacramento, yeah. Milwaukee. Milwaukee, Phoenix. And Sacramento. Yeah. Because you're still in, like, you're not too far from the Bay Area, like, all that shit in California and shit like that. No, that is far, like Sacramento is northern California. Like that's right, but I mean you're still in Cali, so they can just fly down to LA real quick instead of being all the way across the fucking country and shit. I, don't know, I think if they flew to LA, they ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> like you, I mean, like Phoenix is closer to LA than I'm saying Phoenix, Phoenix is yeah. my fourth one. Yeah, that's closer than uh, Sacramento is. San Juan is interesting. I'm like I that is. I don't know like, though about that. I got fans of San Juan. Like yeah, I feel like New Travel Orleans is good for like a weekend. So. I think Cincinnati will really appreciate seeing mm. them, just because they don't have a basketball team. Mm-hmm. Like they'd they'd really come out. Seattle too. I don't think that um, they would want to go to Portland, Denver probably because it's they not. ain't going to Salt Lake City. <laughs> no, <laughs> but they might. I mean, they, they might love consider them some basketball up there. Yeah, that is true. If they get them like the right former jazz player, <laughs> <laughs> sell that bitch out in a minute. They'll come out. Get Jimmer. Find uh, D. Will. Get him out of retirement? No, they hate him in Utah. <laughs> he left. did not leave on good terms. That was my dude, though. He was so cold. He was cold, though. And then that cliff he came. He was cold, and dude. That was... That, that, that Illinois squad. off like him? That hard. Hill. Yeah, that Illinois squad was. It was cold, Duke Brown, though. Yes. Luther Head. The Illinois squad Luther was Luther Head. Uh, James Augustine. Yeah. Roger Powell. That was cold. That, cold, that, that squad. squad was cold. Well, we almost at the end. Tim, you want to do Manchester, and then we'll do Jets Ma- and radio? You got to do it right. Sure. Do it in the voice. You have to say it right. Manchester City uh, completed <laughs> the domestic treble over the weekend, uh, winning their league, domestic cup, and the FA Cup. So pretty much the treble for them, like if you have a, so they have they won everything in their country for their league, I guess, or England. So they won the Premier League title. That'd be their country. They won the FA Cup, which incorporates every level of the Premier League. Well, not the Premier League, but the English England League. So they got like four levels there. And then the uh, the domestic cup, which incorporates like a bunch of motherfucking teams. So they're the first men's team. I had actually wrote it down. Hold on, let me pull that up. I had it in my little notes. Ah. So uh, Man City won the Premier League, the FA Cup, and uh, the League Cup, being the first English men's team. England was the only country in the British Isles not to have witnessed a domestic treble from a men's side. The Arsenal women did accomplish this in 2006 and 2007. So they're not the first English team to do it because the women did it. But they're the first men's side to do it. Cool. Mm. Dope. Manchester? City. Manchester City. They won six out of like the last seven trophies. We gonna <laughs> <laughs> they balling, bro. Yeah. We gonna um, hit the Jets quick because Hit the Jets. We've spent too much time nah, talking about this function. Indubitably. With the Lakers. Mm-hmm. 
The Jets fired their GM, um, Mike McKagan, and VP of Player Personnel, Brian. Why I get these names? <laughs> Him Brian McKagan and Brian Her- 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 Hermdinger. Oh, yeah, Hermdinger. Hermendinger. <laughs> um, McKagan and uh, head coach Adam Gase did not see eye to eye. Gase. John Clayton also reported that um, if there's a suitor, he could see the Jets trading uh, Le'Veon Bell <clears throat> before the season. Jesus. He did not want Bell at all. That's part of the disagreement. Um, Gase didn't see why you'd be paying a running back $13 million a year. How does man come in and get like just, man, just do a, a straight move. power play? Off top. Blinka. Off top. <laughs> I mean, he at least has <laughs> like two even, years. Yeah, like, and at least Rob has some kind right. of connection to the organization. Adam Gase just got there. He's From like, Miami, where he was like, like, I, I don't want to do. Fuck him. How dare you spend this much get money? It. And then he got fired to the for GM. doing it. This is my money now. That y'all just you let use the number three pick in the draft? He spent all, like, all and $161 million dollars in free agency, and you fired him? <laughs> they fired him. Like, Bro. without even seeing, like, any type of Nothing. results. Like, That's like, crazy. Fired. Stupid. That's dumb as shit. That's like doing your whole offseason in 2K and then quitting the damn team. <laughs> like, what the fuck you doing? <laughs> what y'all doing? What's the point? It's been, I don't remember who said it, so I can't give credit, but. Ownership is the largest competitive advantage there is in professional sports. Like, mm-hmm. if you have a good owner, you are set. If you have a bad owner, you are fucked. That's why Stephen A. loves, well, not Stephen A. in general, but a lot of people loved uh, Dr. Jerry Buss. He was one of the greatest the uh, owners of all time. Indeed. Now we're going to end with the radio. We normally don't end with the radio, but kind of a nice song. Uh, Go out on the high note. Yeah. See what I did there. So, <laughs> yeah. so if you are new here, this is our segment where we play an athlete's music. Mm-hmm. It's our radio segment. You know, um, Tim's our DJ, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to welcome you into our backstage and correspondence meeting when we uh, before we go on the air. Um, as I said two weeks ago, we're going to keep running with Dame. So we're going to his first album. This probably will be the as last we week. record. This he's technically week. still in the playoffs. Yes. So if this changes, this will before- be the last week. <laughs> before daybreak. It's <laughs> uh, last time we'll hear Dame until next year. <laughs> so the song that we're going to play this week is called Loyal to the Soil. <laughs> Loyal to the Loyal Soil. Loyal to the Soil. Featuring Lil Wayne. Okay. It's from his first album, The Letter O. Oh. What year is it? 2016. Oh, that's so, so it's still a little late for a Wayne feature. That's it. Wayne in 16. Oh, you going to hear noises and shit. That's all you're going to hear. <laughs> That's all you finna hear. And a lighter. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Was that, was that him or us? So do you want... <laughs> <laughs> Type shit. So do you want the song to start playing and then, you know, you talk over the beginning or do you want to give us your spiel and then we go into it? Spiel. I will go right into it. We're just going to run right into that motherfucker. I did this robbing. So, Hold on, wait. I got to think of my DJ name. You, such I, it's usually such. on the fly. Like, you know. You've been, You've been such saying such I've been such, such a for a while. I know. It's still here. All right. DJ so. Dingling. Ah, Dingling. <laughs> Ring a ding. Ring a ding, green <laughs> bean. <laughs> Shout out to Drew. Anyways. Uh, so you say you want me to start the song and then you'll go. Yeah. Okay. What's the name of the song? Loyal to the Soil. Hold on. I think it ain't it on here? No. No, it ain't. Uh, Loyal to the Soil. By Dame Dollar. Dame Dollar. And Russell 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 Russell. Russell. All the levels good? All right. All right, go ahead. And we are live on the air in three, two, one. DJ such and such. Goddamn dollar here featuring Lil Wayne on WTECK Radio 69.9 with 69 is fine. Loyal to the soil. That money stacked tall, but only partially my focus. So compassionate, struggle hard for me to cope with. Do a lot for others, not for credit or to soak in. But they have an impact on direction that they go in. Grounded by the roots, hooked to the soil. Recognize the rumble that we in, yeah, it's royal. Crabs in a barrel, wrapped up in foil. Kids grow up scars that are rubbed down with oil. In life, they changed a bit, but I can't grow apart. For those in my position that don't feel me grow a heart. I grew up round love, but we had a slower start. Hooping on the tree and fighting at the park. Lucky we had guys. We was more blessed than others. We was the deepest family. Nobody had more cousins. The street lights were flicking. Everybody running, no huddle. Cause if you didn't make it, everybody got in trouble. I won't let that money define me. Ah, let my struggles refine me. Ah, know my angels behind me. Young, rich, and in the sticks, trying to find peace. I don't get high, and I ain't sell dope. 
People ask why I did it for my folks. You wanna slice the pie, then you gotta have hope. Take the plan serious, so watch it go and smoke. Watch it go and smoke. There it is. Watch it go and smoke. <laughs> watch it go and smoke. Man, I'll watch it go and smoke. Smoke. Uh, chin to the clouds, all ten on solid ground. Sipping purple when they used to never touch the Bobby Brown. When it comes to the crown, I done dread locked it down. Rest in peace, my daddy rabbit. He ain't heaven hopping round. I've been out here on the grind. I won't mind no time. Keep it 100, not even 99.9. It's Latunchi, the best rapper alive. I rep five. Invite your girl to my suite at the low. She left high. Oh my, in a double arm. Ready to die. My pocket's fed as precious, but what's more precious than time? Cause life is too short. I got that from too short. Couldn't Ball. I was too sharp but rich like I play two sports Flag red like scarlet Keep my head in my wallet Leave the BS in the toilet Leave the BS on the Charmin With TF on my garments I would tough it like Ruff Lauren And I'm loyal to my soul You straight from hell I mean New Orleans so uh, won't let that Okay the Wayne All right. <laughs> <laughs> He kept a couple He kept a couple in the I top. mean it's something about Lil Wayne's flow That will yeah, never he, um, Yeah he can yeah. You know what I mean I'm not a huge fan But he can definitely flow like I appreciate Lil Wayne a lot more in 2019 than I did when he was on every single song every for two years in a row. Song. Had a hundred songs. That motherfucker was on like he was fire. His, yeah, he was at his best like right before that run though. Yeah, that's my point. Like so when he got on his run, it was like mm-hmm. Wayne stands were like Wayne, applauding. When, yeah, but I was like he was. Better. That was when the drugs took to go. Yeah, <laughs> that lean. <laughs> it's my that, cup. That Tyreek Evans. Oh. Man, all right. We ain't got no blow the whistle this week, so we are gonna get right into the tech top five and end the show. Five, four, three, two, one. Tech, tech top, top five. five. Last week's <laughs> tech top five was the best black sitcom. Shout out to Eric who won. It did numbers this week. Yeah, it, it sure did, and everybody had an opinion about uh, who they would have on their list. Um, I'm just gonna pick one randomly. Mike, he had Boondocks. Uh, Boondocks don't count. We don't, don't keep rolling. Don't keep rolling. Boondocks was great, though. Great. Sh- it was it's great. Not a sitcom. I know, but it was great, though. Uh, shout out to <laughs> Lola. Shout out to YBO Podcast. Shout out. What up? Uh, she said, no order but top five, wife and kids, Fresh Prince, Living Single, Cosby Show, and Everybody Hates Chris. And then she said, wait, Moesha got to be somewhere. Yeah. Mm. Moesha. Moesha. Moesha can move around. I used to love Moesha. Cartwell and Mo. She had Fresh Prince at five, Living Single at four. Fre- she put Fresh Prince twice. <laughs> she said. She said oh, she, she meant to say Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Jamie mm-hmm. Foxx at five, Fresh. God dang it, let me start over. <laughs> Can you rewind me? <laughs> at number five, Kurt Will and Mo had Jamie Foxx show. At four, she had Living Single, three, Fresh Prince, two, Cosby show, one, Martin, and hit the cartwheel for Martin. <laughs> Bust it wide open. All right. <laughs> 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 this week, like I said, it's a draft. Memorial Day. It's a holiday. We hope y'all enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Share Indeed. share the show with somebody at the barbecue. Exactly. Y'all know y'all for to be out there queuing. Y'all <laughs> might as well have technical file playing while y'all queuing mm. and eat. I right, mean, well, where, where else can you find hardcore sports talk and, and hardcore porn? Okay, that's not what we're promoting. Hey, it was a lot of dick this episode. <laughs> it was a lot of dick this episode. Pause, but still. <laughs> Yeah, good. Maybe not let your grandma listen to this episode. <laughs> not this one. Maybe not this one. Not I'm this sorry. One. I ain't trying to set nobody up. Get nobody to rile it up thing. a little bit. You know, maybe she wanted to hear some dick. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. It's been a little while. I know. It's been a little while. But, you know. Y'all wild. You know, we're going we to pass on grandma this week. not the one for granted. Exactly. We're going to pass on grandma this week. <laughs> this week's show is uh, or the, the top five. Y'all got me all thrown off the the draft that we're doing is we're going to formulate a, a five. So, an NBA five. starting five. Four. Only using players that were in the playoffs this year. So, does that count people that are on teams in the playoffs, but they're hurt? Yes. Yes. Great. Okay. Now, we just did a random drawing about who would draft where. We're going to do a snake draft format. Ooh, number mm-hmm. one is actually difficult. Number one is difficult. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of pressure on you. I know. You. I have mm-hmm. a lot of pressure. Fuck. Ken's first. I'm ready, though. I'm Eric ready. is second. Tim is third. I am fourth. And we're so just for for my understanding as we pick through this. Are we just trying to draft the best like starting like best? No matter lineup? position. I mean, or no, 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 no. It has no, to be I'm a team. Like, like, yeah. Who's five would beat who's five? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So who has okay, to try to get the best five possible? Okay, yes. Bet. Okay. First picks on you, sir. Is there? I'm gonna go KD. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna go with. Ooh. It's difficult, isn't it? It is, because I know what my heart says. 
I'm gonna go Steph Curry. Dang it. Okay. Mm. I was hoping your heart would lead you into. <laughs> I know the type of team I want to build. So. Yeah, you you're ruining my stuff. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. I'm gonna go with. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, this is a tough one. It is hard because you have to build your team smartly. Mm-hmm. Because you got to take your next pick into account. Jesus. I'm going to go with Kawhi. Hmm. Okay. So now it's on me. I get four and I get to come right back around again. So I can pick two crucial building blocks here. Let me go ahead and grab. Oh, boy. If I want Giannis. I'm going to need me a guard that can facilitate. That's why I really wanted Steph Curry. I was hoping Steph would still be there. Well, to... Steph and Giannis would be perfect. Perfect together. So I can't let Eric have him. I'm taking Giannis, mm-hmm. and I'm taking James Harden. Ah, uh, shit. Okay. Tim, back to you. I'm going to go with Jokic. Wait for this. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh... I know. This is I'm difficult. To really think this is definitely way more difficult than it seems. Uh, give me JoJo. Joel Embiid. Embiid. That's nice. Yeah. Fuck. Um, give me Kyrie. <laughs> You're going with the Knicks. You, you, okay. <laughs> you go again, Ken. <sighs> um, what is Dallas Center? I mean, not Dallas, Denver. He got him. Oh, you he picked got him already? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, give me... You can take Vuvacic. <laughs> Nikola. <laughs> no. You got him, dude. Um, There's Aldridge available. Hey, that don't help him out. Um, I forgot about the Spurs. <laughs> oh, shit. That is a whole squad. I'm trying to... I'm thinking now who was in... Um, My bad. It's taking me so long. We have um, to count you down, Sam. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Five. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. Clay Thomas. Damn, Clay Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. That's, that's Damn. who I wanted. That was exactly where I was going. So um, I'm Back to Eric. Paul George. God dang it, I forgot about oh, OKC. No, I sure did too. Oh, okay. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you got Kyrie. I'm just knocking cats off my list. I wrote down there, down everybody. In the playoffs. <laughs> uh, I knew I was forgetting two teams, and I couldn't remember which teams I was forgetting. All right, so I'll I'll, right for my the, point guard, then. Ah, you already got a point guard in Jokic. Oh, I know, but I need Thomas. a guard. I'm yeah, gonna roll I'm with. Go so I got Kawhi. I got Jokic. I need some shooting. You take There's one him. obvious person they that you are not thinking about right now. I'm gonna go with Dame. Okay. Okay. Like, oh, well, yeah, like you said, I need shooting that. I need a point guard. I'm like, yeah, so I was looking only, at it, but yeah, never mind. Like only one option <laughs> there for you. Never mind. Let me go on ahead here. Oh boy, what do I want to do? I get two picks. Two picks. Um. You know what? I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to grab Jimmy Butler. I'm going to take Jimmy. I'll get you that. That's a good pick. And then I'm going to go on ahead and take a... I need a center. Yeah, Mark. I'm you definitely do. not going to take <laughs> Mark at all. I should just take Brooke Lopez and call it one. Nah, don't do it. <laughs> Giannis, James Harden, Jimmy Butler, and Brooke Lopez... Then I would just need to round it out. You do need some spacing. I'm going to go with Brooke. Fuck. Yeah. That's, that was my next. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to pick. <laughs> <laughs> it took yeah. me long enough to get to him and shit. Damn it. All right. Oh. Damn it. I just knew exactly who I was going to pick and I forgot. Tim, it's on you. Uh, oh, it's on me? Okay. Man, um, I need another. Oh, I don't know. I got shake and move. Um. But I need two sides to that, so I'm gonna go with Middleton. Not mad at it. I feel like he can. I'm gonna go with Balake. You said what? I'm gonna go with Balake. Who is Balake? Blake Griffin. I thought about him. I really did. <laughs> I really gave him some thought. Ken, back on you. You got the last two. Your last two picks. 
right now you have Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, yeah. and Clay Thompson, Clay which Thompson. is a solid starting. Yeah, it's a solid. It's a solid. But now I need to get. Oh, um, fuck! I don't want to pick this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Draymond Green. All right. And then you need the center. Yeah, no, that's what I'm trying to. Um, wait, what's the next word we said? You got KD, Kyrie, Clay, and Draymond. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go. You want Clint Capella? <laughs> nah. <laughs> um, who's Portland's? I don't want Cantor. Nurkic. Um, Nurkic. Yeah. I'm gonna go Nurkic. You mean, you taking Nurkic? Yeah. That's the best center. Available. Yeah, he's the best center right now. No, he's not. Who? Who are we missing? Would we'll be done at the end. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> I already got my center. That's why I was like, who? Uh, go ahead. Oh wait, he done. It. You got a center yet? No, I'm done. I got a center. You got a center? He has a center. I got Big. You forgot about Horford? You forgot about Boston? He picked Kyrie, so he yeah, had to get about Boston. But he said, Oh, yeah. Al Horford does not take him. Okay. Well, yeah. we know who your next he don't, he don't feel No, I got a center. Jokic. Oh, yeah. Eric? Let's see. So I got Steph and Steph and B, Paul PJ. George, and Blake Griffin. Ah, look what mm. I fucking did. It ain't <laughs> <laughs> I picked all the fucking. Um, Warriors and shit. I wasn't <laughs> trying to do that shit. <laughs> you really did. Yeah, I, I did. Like, I wasn't even trying to. Like, god damn it. I forgot about Boogie. But, um. Mm. <laughs> I'm pissed. I'm upset about <laughs> They just, we just gonna run right past Boogie. You put them on your team. Your knees. <laughs> uh, Almost countdown time. Uh, Five. Four. Three. Two. Jamal Murray. Damn it! That was too far. <laughs> I believe you too. <laughs> right there I'm like Whoa. See, So I was trying to decide Between like I was trying to decide Between Mitchell Murray And Reddit Yeah Cause I needed more shooting That's what I'm That's the three I'm sitting at <laughs> That's literally the three I'm sitting at so I like, And I was like I just split the difference Cause like Murray can give you Shooting and creation And playmaking Fuck you <laughs> <laughs> Damn it Alright so this is my last pick too Huh Mm-hmm. Um, and I need shooting, so I'm gonna just ooh, I could, but then I'm gonna get lambasted for this backcourt if I do <laughs> lambasted, <laughs> slambasted. But I mean, it's a good backcourt. I'm gonna go with CJ, with my last pick. Dang it! Okay, I was definitely about to pick McCollum. I was gonna have the perfect team. My team not bad, but it's just in that case. Since you took CJ McCollum, and I have Giannis, Harden, Butler, and Brooke. Let me round that out with a very versatile guard. I don't like my options. Bledsoe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could go Malcolm. I'm, honestly, oh, I could have put. I forgot about Brogdon. Brogdon would actually be a nice, a nice fifth person here because he doesn't need the ball, mm-hmm. but he can score on his thing. Fifty, forty, ninety. I'm going. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with Brogdon. I, I like, like his that. Game too. Pick, I like that. That's so you got the Warriors. Pick. You got the Bucks. Yeah, basically. I like his game. Though. Oh, look what you made me look! What you made me do here? <laughs> hey, I ain't trying to do it. No, I'm talking to Eric. Look what you uh, made me do here. So to read back everyone's final teams, Ken, who had the first pick, uh-huh. his team is comprised of Kyrie Irving. This is not in order. This is just from yeah. point guard to center. Mm-hmm. Kyrie Irving, Clay Thompson. I don't know if you have Draymond or KD at the three, but that, that's your forwards: Draymond and KD, and then uh, Nurkic at the center. Yep, it's a solid team. It's solid. Eric, do some damage. He has a backcourt with uh, Jamal Murray and Steph Curry. A little undersized, but that's and then um, he got Paul George and Blake Griffin as his forwards and MB as his center. That's not bad. Five out. I like that. Tim has um, Dame and CJ as the backcourt. Way to stick with Portland. <laughs> and then he has uh, Middleton and Kawhi for his forwards. That's nasty. That's solid. I, I that's can see them. Team. I can see them getting a little worked a little undersized. bit. They're a little undersized. And then he has Jokic at the center. I don't know Ooh, about that. I don't that. know about Jokic that. Jokic is, he's going to be the facilitator. Yeah, well, but we know Tim's But you don't have no, I mean, you got Kawhi, Kawhi and, Kawhi but and that's. Yeah. Jokic is a pretty decent defender, too. Like, he's not, he's, he's not going to get. He's yeah, going to get he dunked is. on by my team. That's what I'm saying. I'm and getting land based in my backcourt. I was thinking defense. That I was like, I, I need my other. I'm going to get land based in my backcourt. Murray for Murray would have worked a lot better on your team. Yeah, okay. But you're still undersized with the forwards. You're just undersized, period. Yeah, but I got I got some defense though. Yeah. Let's we'll see. Yeah, we'll yeah, see. Yeah. Just said fours. Your whole team, yeah. I forgot Damon and CJ's. Yeah. Like, it's a little backcourt. So I got um, Malcolm Brogdon and James Harden as my backcourt. I want to point out that James Harden will be handling the ball here. He is the point <laughs> guard in this situation. Obviously. Thank you. Some people, you know, he they is the point guard this year. 
Um, then I got Jimmy Butler at the three, Giannis at the four, and Brooke Lopez at the five. That's not a bad Brooke spot. threw me off, though, because I wanted Brooke on my team. <laughs> the spacing. Yeah. And he's very good at the rim. So Indeed. That's it. That's the top so we five. Should, we got spacing, too. There you have it. There you have it. We know who won't be winning. Dude, did it, oh. I got like one vote Tim, last week. Yeah, Tim, he never gets votes. <laughs> Tim never gets <laughs> votes. Like, it doesn't even matter. He get one vote. He averages a vote a week. You know, your list wasn't bad. It what? wasn't. It, I get one. No, I told y'all, it don't matter what it is no more. It yeah. truly does not matter. Do not ever I, I think people just have stronger lists. You have Black okay. the Jeffersons, Martin, Cosby, and Fresh Prince. I think all of them were on somebody else's list. Yeah. Every last one of them. Just in different orders. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Eric had Blackish. I had the Jeffersons. And the Cosbys. And Fresh Prince. We and all had Fresh Prince, Martin. And Martin. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's last week. This week's of the NBA draft. Let us know who you think had the best team. Y'all can't really give us a five because that's not the same thing as what we just did. So let us know who won. Enjoy y'all barbecues. Enjoy your day off of work. Enjoy the kickoff the summer. I'm Camille, point guard of the crew, the real life Tifa Lockhart. You can catch me on Twitter, Instagram, and the snappiest of chats, at Camille Monet. C-A-M-I-L-L-E-M-O-N-A-E because... Your mom. Your mom is fancy. Thank you. Tim almost saves you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was ready. Bucks Burner on Twitter. That's all you get. Burner. Yeah, damn right. Um, K. Harris underscore D-A underscore... No, that's not it anymore. Jesus. Uh, oh, my God. Every, every day underscore gentleman on a, um, Instagram. I'm K. Harris 216 on Twitter and Snapchat. And it's your boy. T I M K I N Z the number three, aka Ass Catch Him, aka Mr. Give It To Me. We'll see you next week. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media. Media.